more time, guys. One more time. Hopefully this will be good. Yeah, this is doing better. He's, he's just a random, but he did get up winning that keyboard, whatever it looks like. He's, I can't see as the expression on his face. He's happy. Well, maybe. What is it? Six, 64 gigs and SD and a mouse bungee? That's pretty good. Mouse bungee. Organics won again. Congratulations. The Organics win originally. In favor of the mouse bungee and the 64 gig SD card. Wise choice. And the faster we can get closer to the loser brackets. Uh oh. Where are the rest of the people here? Four, five, zero, eight, seven, eight. Hey. hey! Who's that guy? I don't know. Not a Battlefield player, so don't care. Uh, Exerus Adam asked, will Exerus get their own team for Timmy Tents? I don't know. I told them. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dictating anything. I just they came to us and said, "Hey, you want to do a TV Ten show?" And we're like, "Yeah, we'll do that. It'll be fun." This is a benefit when you go to a live event like this. Oh. Uh, Snowblind, a.k.a. Mike, who's been doing a lot of our organizing of the servers and stuff, ended up winning. Now, he had nothing to do, he had nothing to do with the streaming stuff or the spectator PCs. He was, uh, simply managing, uh, what servers we were getting into, and so he's been a tremendous help as a volunteer. And he's a winner. He won, he won a mouse and a gift card. He's happy. Yeah. So waiting to see what We're getting close, though. We have two items that do not quite compare very well, but are going out together. We have an open-air case, all right, as well as two fans. Not a, uh, some case fans, but also a case that are as meant to be used with no fans. So it's a their goal. Yeah, nice one. Nice. Oh. What is the next prize? What is it? What is that? Is it an SD drive? Salt State? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know what could be better than a single fan? Dual fans. Dual fans. And what else are they giving away? Oh, and another one of those. Uh, those PC game pads. We also have another Logitech. Um, I forget what the thing is called. It's this one. Another Warshot player, perhaps? 794 going 
Organics is just stroking his beard. You gotta get, you know, there's a guy in front of Brett with a top hat. You give the top hat guy with Organics, and he's gonna look like a, a late 19th century gentleman. Probably served uh, in the Civil War. Although I don't think they wore sandals and shorts in the Civil War. What do we got next? More fans. And what's that? It's our hand. It's a mouse pad. Oh, from Mad Cats. It's Uh, Dragon Hella says EA sucks. I don't know what the context is to that comment, given this has Warriors right now has nothing to do with Battlefield, at all. But that's what that is what Dragon Hellas did when he decided to log on to Twitch.tv to make that one comment. Is he confusing? Twitch.tv forces us OBF with the EA help desk? Maybe. Is he confusing me with an EA employee? I hope not. There are crimson guys. Crimson guys are wearing the they are the crimson shirts. So they are they should be a shot. Hitha says, I saw a cute supergirl with a cape. No, I know, no. Hitha's talking. What else we got, guys? A a wireless Billa comes by and, and wants to commiserate with me over his loss of his loss of prizes. No prizes for Billa. Have faith, though, Billa. You may win. You have like a half a dozen tickets. Did you steal them from other people? Air filter. Air filter. <laughs> What's that? What is that? What's that in his hands? It's, a, it's an air filter, and then it's a rocker mat. It's a mouse pad. Oh, a, a CSGO. That's not bad. Is that him? Lab machines here somewhere. They're all here. All players that we're seeing in the matches for the last four hours are here. Well, I don't know if if new Fap City guys are still here. They got eliminated at the beginning of round one by Exertus. Both Exertuses. Yes, that's right. There's Billa. Oh, hey guys, Dasker here, and that's Two Die Samurai. And there's the rest of the crowd. Some people are more enthusiastic than others about winning these prizes. What is it? DDR1? Did you win? Billa didn't win. This guy won. Ah, yeah, yeah. What, what is this? What is this? I do like Top Hat Guy. 
next to Brett. He's at a camera right now. It's a classy top hat. It's Austrian. What, uh, what, what is it? No, but what is it? Oh, heat sink. Snowblend was just on the uh, was just on the, the camera. Are there booze? No winners for the heat sink. We need some private time with Andy. Where is Andy? Is he in the shot? He, um, yeah, he's he's behind the camera guy. He's behind not our camera guy. He's behind the other camera guy. There he is. Oh, you see him? There he is. There he is. There's Andy. Andy in the orange shirt. He doesn't know he's on camera. Come on, guy, get out of the way. We want to see Andy. Who's that guy? Bleak, 22. All right. Tournament's not over, Pink Floyd, and after this raffle gets done, we'll be doing the, the semifinals and the finals of the tournament, and then a 10v10 showcase uh, matches, series of them, it'll be just for fun. Uh, what is that, is that a Logitech mechanical keyboard? No, it's a cordless keyboard. It's, a, it, it's just a regular computer. Other than it's wireless, no. I think that... Probably. What is that? I don't know, but I know that if I were to want that, which I can't because I don't have a ticket, I wouldn't be able to take it with me anyway. I wouldn't be able to get to the airport. Nexus Gaming Business, at least this tournament determined, will end in the next two hours. I guarantee it. Tiger Lift says that Andy is a very short man for being a scientist. Big things come in small packages. That, that's what... Frogman's Theory asks, where did all these prizes come from? They're so random. So that's a toolkit and that's a mouse pad. It'll be your day, Bella. Hey, K-Rake! K-Rake won! That's every war child... Every war, every war child player won a prize. What the, this is rigged. Congratulations to War Child. I think that even if they don't win the BF4 finals, they'll still walk away richer men than any other Battlefield players. K Rake ends up being that the fifth, the fifth prize needed. Non, uh, non logicality says so. This is the whole entire white male population for Atlanta. <laughs> that is correct, sir. All right, six five zero. Yeah, the it's down here, guys. So I have to, I have to look down into it. It's, it's hard. 
Dark Times asked, did Bill's mom have to show up so he could play? Not true. His dad showed up. It is Dark Times is not is not being a cool guy. Dark Times, I love you, but come on, man. Yeah, he's right next to me. Is that you? No. Problem theory is actually most of them are probably aren't even from Atlanta. Uh, the battle, a lot of the basketball guys aren't from Atlanta, but yeah, none of them are. no, uh, no, no, Junior's from Atlanta. Come from far and wide. Yes, Junior's from Atlanta. Mad Dogs from Ohio. Yes. Maybe from Chicago. I'm from New Jersey. Hitler suggests that they should give away backpacks and pencils as school supplies instead of wireless keyboards to promote higher education. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's that's very nice. What is that? What? It's a motherboard. Tell us. Just tell us the chipset. That's all we care about. Thank you. 861 chipset. It's Intel. It's not, it's not high end. It's not like I mean, it's not a gaming. It's, it'd be for like a server. Yeah. It's a hand me down. Or it's a it's a it's an Indian Indian gift giver gift. Is that PC? I don't think that is. That case is pretty cool. <laughs> Which team is the grandpa on? I, I'm not on any baffled teams. It's gonna go to number four, five, zero, six, nine, six. Did Bill win? It sounds like the most upset person on this was actually one of the, the ladies. She's she's upset she didn't win anything. Four, five, zero, eight, six, one. Come on, Billa. Did Billa get it? Hey! Oh, look at this guy. This guy isn't even enthusiastic. He's not even happy. It's almost it's like you said the DMV. It's, it's mad because not a whole computer. It's a, it, it, it's a case. What's that? What's that though? What's that? What's that? Oh, the toolkit. And then what else is it? Is that a pair of headphones? It's a pair of headphones. By who? Who? What's the brand? Oh, Rocka. Okay. 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 And I don't know why you guys think that I'm hating on women from that comment. I'm just making an observation that it was a it was a lady who was complaining about how that she didn't get picked. And, was that right? Andy Shazam from Little BF, I think, won. Uh, I cannot give the I can't give the headset to Brett. Brett is using the camera. That is that one of those keyboards that has screws and stuff? What is that? All right. Don't know that guy. To rat seven. Thank you, Revo. It, no, Andy did win. That was not the same Andy though. It was two different Andys. That's Andy Shazam, not Andy Andy PhD Andy. The next prize is a right, fans, two fans, two fans, and a and a mouse pad. Did Billy win? Oh, Andy PhD won from Exertus. Way to go, Andy. He's posing. 
Way to go, Andy. Right, ladies and gentlemen, up next. <laughs> Andy did it. He won. It's pretty remarkable that so many Battlefield players have won something. I think it is. What is it? Bill, it does never win. What is that? It's a Wi-Fi wi thing. What is it? Did Billy just give up and and leave? What what is it? What is it? What is that? All right, five, zero, six, nine, one. Yay! That guy want. Way to go. Yes, I was ambiguous with my my language, for on purpose. No, I did not. <laughs> this was a good cause. This is why going to land fests are a lot of fun, guys. You're doing it for a good cause. Good reason. But is that the, that the last prize, though? There is a the origin of that question. <laughs> well, we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> oh, the crowbar is really cool. It's like a one-half scale crowbar. The Maelstrom case. Big case. Will Bill win? Who won? Oh ho ho! This this guy won. It's like multicultural. Yeah, I'm just I'm just responding to the chat. The chat the chat can be very can be very can be very, have a lot they have a lot of issues sometimes. All right, we're done, guys. We are going to go into the uh, we are going to go to the stream soon. Here are the prizes. Hey, hey can you look at the Crimson guys. Can you turn the camera to the Crimson guys behind you? Everyone's like, I want to see the Crimson guys. See, there's Crimson guys. They can't hear you guys, by the way. They just see you guys. All right, guys. We are uh, going to go live real soon, so stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned, guys, and uh, go to an intermission real quick. We'll get in the server, and we'll be good to go. So just stay tuned for another few minutes, and we'll be there. Hey, Brett's here. There's Brett. I'm going to mute us now.
Alright guys, Destro here. We are live yet again. How is how are we looking? I'll tell you, so, uh, the focus is a bit off. No, I, uh, Mike, can you look just look through this camera and just see if, if the focus is a bit off? Or just, it's, it's, it's good then. Uh, but nonetheless, guys, we are uh, getting the server right now. We're going to be going live real soon. Brett's just uh, grabbing some water. He'll be back in just a bit. This is going to be Crimson versus... No, versus Warchild. Let's take a look at this. Where are my things? Crimson versus Warchild. This is going to be good. Where is this? Oh, here we go. And save. I don't know. The chat's saying it's not that clear. And it's dropping frames like crazy. Haha, <laughs> that's that's great. Out of our control, guys, unfortunately. But we are going to go live real soon. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. We're in the server right now. All five. I can, I can mess with the, the... I can mess with the the camera later. It's not a big deal. We will wait for Bet, though. Uh, in the meantime... In the meantime, though, let's... Um, Let's go to the map and see what we see. Here we go. Man, I'm dropping... Here we go. It's lagging. All right, guys, we are in the server. We are waiting for it to go live. Brett's here with me as well. Interesting one. Uh, if you were on the Chinese team, you actually get the cap B flag first. So if you were looking right now onto the uh, the screen, which I don't know, uh, no, I actually don't think it is up. But uh, we are going to be uh, basically on on B flag as you spawn in. You'll be able to cap that first. But the U.S. team is going to be spawning back behind the uh, Charlie flag. So uh, honestly, it, it's going to be kind of somewhat imbalanced, like it is on Twitter or so, where uh, really. Chinese team is going to have a chance to get two quick uh, flag caps really fast and be pressuring on C flag right now. So, uh, and I believe we are going to be going live here in just a few minutes. Yeah, we're about to get going. Uh, we're going live on the next restart. On the next restart. But expect for uh, the, the Chinese team to be sending one out towards A. The rest of them are going to be flying to B. Uh, the use of the. Um, the windows that come down, the metal windows, that's actually going to be coming into play. Um, they have changed it, I believe, where nades will not blow them up, so that's going to change the, the flow of how people move back and forth from uh, from a uh, highway or uh, side streets there, I'm sorry, from highway into C flag. And uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do. They, do they go, uh, do they go launchers and try and blow that out? Do they... Uh, they just try and leave it up and then go back and forth through there. I mean, what, what, are, what are they going to siege? So you do not have to worry about any of the roof play. It's all going to be on the ground. Elevator not going to be coming to play. So you don't have to worry about any of that uh, happening. Good one. Uh, I would say it, it's, it's, it's going to be kind of it's gonna be it, it might be a little bit annoying there. But uh, expect for a really intense match. This right here is really going to show off the gun skills of both of these teams. Um, now, as you look at the, the screen, too, at the same time, uh, it has a very cool way around A uh, and, and, and get up into the back cap. The, the back cap is like for C. So there's going to be a lot of back range and lot flanking going on. The tiniest map for fives. Now, there's one rule that we have to mention, and that is no roofs. Absolutely. I just said that. No roofs. No roofs. Uh, guys uh, informed that, there's, that you can't be on the roof. Both of these teams... I have played in tournament before, previous tournaments, level BF, and, uh... Yep. So it looks like we're going to be having a late... Yes, now. we do have a change, and so... Hopefully it's one that actually has uh, players in it. Yeah, so... Spectator slots. Uh, let's hope so. 
I think it does. We're going to one of the other servers, so just give us one moment to get into those other server. Uh, it'll take a, a few minutes. Do we have? Uh, we will be starting real soon. Uh, although it's on Dawnbreaker, it needs to be switched to Siege of Shanghai. It's not too much of an issue. No, it's not too much. Anyway, so, so, so basically the roof leg of you know, having that is definitely going to change the way uh, this particular game is going to be uh, coming out. And apparently my mic is way, way, way too loud. It's way too loud right now? So... Is that what people are saying right now? That's, that's what I'm getting from uh, Killa over here on the battle log. Is that... Is that so you guys... You guys is it too loud, guys? Too quiet. I keep on trying to... Ch let me... Let me... Ch is... Guys in the chat, is it too loud? Uh, we, we just messed around with his microphone a little bit, so... All right, so we'll see. I am in the game, and I do not know if it's going to be the one. I, mean, I don't think any... No, what? The chat's still saying that you're a little too loud, but not too bad. Too well, I can, I can bring it down a little bit, guys. We'll get it sorted out. We shall get it sorted out. So anyways... This is going to be the semifinals, guys. If you were one out, yes. I believe if you, you type in, do we have bracket set up? Uh, we should have bracket set up. In chat, if you have bracket, I believe if you type in uh, exclamation point brackets, it should take you or post the link up there. But uh, we are going to be having Warchild versus Crimson. Crimson, the winner of this service, main team in the finals. On best of three map situation, be pretty. pretty yes. Fun. Although we're still getting, we're still getting ping issues. We're Still, yeah, we're still getting ping issues. So I don't know if we're going to stay here or not. Crimson still with 70 ping versus uh, versus Workshop with 30 ping. This is unacceptable, guys. Well, we and I'm dropping frames in the stream and you guys are getting mad at me. Oh, no. It's not my fault, though. Uh, resolved. Uh, Lex to tell lie 85 says that Brett has broke my speakers 10 times. Does that mean that... His speakers ten times on your behalf. He's. I don't know what's worse, the fact that he would, that 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 he keeps on buying speakers to keep them getting blown out, or that he has such a uh, a desire to watch your streams. I think that speaks volumes to. You know what? They, they love it. They love it. They do love it. He does. Shame Twelve says the first person to kick Cream Girl in the nuts gets fifty dollars PayPal. <laughs> fifty dollars uh, PayPal. I should. Fifty dollars. And it was a dollar sign. It wasn't a. It wasn't in lira I'll do that. or yen <laughs> do or Deutschmarks or some esoteric currency that doesn't exist anymore. Do we have to have video evidence? I don't know if I can do it. Guys, we are still waiting for everyone to go in, but the, the pings. The, I do not think it's a problem with the servers. I think it's a problem with uh, some switches. Yeah, I'm going to say that is the fact we have. Yeah. Over there with uh, a maximum of 67 ping right now, and uh, Crimson at 18. So that is uh, pretty, yeah, pretty bad. And uh, now I'm too loud? So now I'm too loud. I, I turned you down. I turned you down. I don't know who. I, I don't, I don't know. Everyone else here is saying that you sound fine. And looking at the chat. <laughs> I'm looking at the volume meter, and I'm clearly louder than Brett is. Well, you know, hey, I, it, it happens. People, people have sensitive. Gameplay real quick. In the meantime, though, I am going to step out and make sure that... Alright guys, we are going live in just a bit. We will be back. Yeah, I...
I'm not comfortable with this. If I was Crimson, I would not be comfortable with this. Pings are too high. They're too high. Especially for a land. Guys, we're at a land. All these people are physically here. I can see all of them with my eyeballs. With the right... No. no land. No, no... <laughs> land options. Land pink, right? I think we are restarting, though. Awesome stuff that we have in store for us today. We are going to be going live. Is this live? Is this oh, yeah, it is live. This round is live. Okay, awesome stuff. So, anyways, I am expecting. I have to. I have to say. Uh, I have to say that. Are we doing 197 tickets? Or we're doing 200. Uh, it's, it's, it's it's good it's enough. It's all good. We've done 197 all day today. Yes. So we're going to be sticking with this. And as you see there, that's the, the power of the B-spawn right there. The power of the B-spawn. Gets capped right there at the break. Now, if you're wondering why there's not any tickets, it's going down. It is because you have that to go on to, yes. to start burning. Anything. Two flag burns, uh, five seconds remaining. War Child on U.S., Crimson on China. Yeah, and these teams break out. Uh, we are going to be seeing, I think, a 3-2. Yeah, Man, push, okay. I was just Crimson. Oh no, they both don't see each other. Garrett gonna come around the corner and gets taken down. But there's that back race that I was talking about. Razor, all the way to Razor. He is taking on 33 seconds in. Still anyone's game. Razor just holding down Alpha, but Bravo a double kill against Crimson, pushing on Bravo. But what? Is there anyone there? I don't see anyone on Bravo. Why are they ignoring it? Yeah, so right now, uh, Eric pushed right now from Project and uh, one who, uh, and it looks like they're actually going to push. So, one child, and I hate to, uh, to capitalize on that. Very surprising, because uh, they, they did have, I'd say, the better answer. Uh, it's like, you know, that can't see what I'm But this is uh, uh, Captain Garrett gets to get taken down from the backside. Now, we will be seeing the one get taken down on A flag, so now A is going to be going back to the session. But Project has been back behind them almost this entire time, causing all sorts of trouble. He's going to be a spawn point. He's been getting picks. He's been getting caps. Uh, and, and he's just a thorn in their side right now. Yes. And now B flag is going to take a kind of a setup on Yes, Organics gets it taken out by Freak. Does go for a revive, but gets taken out. Uh, that's a complete wipe of all of Crimson on uh, uh, in the game thus far. Project, though, spawns in. They all spawn back in. Uh, Warchild does end up getting a double cap on this, a Bravo Alpha. They are now setting up, as you can see, spreading out quite evenly across across that, that thoroughfare. Yeah, it was just, um, so this allows teams to do is basically play from both sides. And uh, we are going to be seeing very big secret. Uh, we just so friendly. And so it's a three man hit uh, coming up through Grace. Ooh. He does take a razor. Oh, he does get taken out. He does take get taken out. Down, but he did some work there. Unfortunately, his team wasn't able to capitalize, and they're just now pushing back on top. Yeah, they are playing three men under Bravo. K Rake's there, throws some nades, but waiting for more to push on up. Will he get anything here? Does get a, a hit indicator. Does get on that. Uh, that guy here that goes. Base. He, he doesn't know where, where to look first. Yeah, he, one of the problems right now is that, oh my god, are they actually going to cap this? Project, turn around. He completely missed the fact that C-Thug was getting capped the entire time. And now, we start bringing those tickets down. No. They, they, they really haven't been in the lead. Uh, only at the very beginning for, for a very short time. Warchild has really been able to come back. And they go into the possession. Uh, right now, Project's able to cap on that. They're going to be rewalking the way back to the b flag. Uh, now, honestly, right now, you should you should stall him at C, which is exactly what they're doing. Heavy big push, and good set up. Don't push him to C right now. You can hold the line, just like War Child was doing before. But Captain Garrett and Brian Bravo, oh, he can't survive. Peeking all the way down. But I like Cream Girl. Cream Girl's pushing around the side from Charlie to Alpha along the outskirts. If he can get a nice back rage without being found, he may have something. But instead, no, he wants to take out Project, but watch out, there could be more. Uh, from Crimson, they were able to take out the last player uh, from Warchild that was on their side of the map. Now, the only problem was is that they didn't leave anybody there to stop. And now they're going to have four up onto the flag. They already have support over onto to, uh, to highways. And now they're going to power burn people. And they're in a really good position because right now, Warchild or Crimson, they're out in the open. They're from A, 
hey, and look at that. All three players. We'll see the two that are pushing him. And he's definitely been seen backing up. But the C flag is going to get burned. Uh, even if Organics, let's say, uh, gets a couple of good picks right there, they're just going to be responding back to a suit. They're going to get back. There's one now. We'll see if he's going to make something happen. He does get one. But here's what we just saw. Uh, Gary just got a back spawn into the elevator room. And now he's going to be able to come around to the suit. But if Crimson plays this correctly, you know, they should push back onto the C flag, get a hold of it, and then grab A, and he just hold from there. Yes, go to Captain Garrett. It's 111 to 111. Uh, Alpha is a, a, all the points are being contested. Warchild takes Charlie, but actually Razor is taking Alpha as well. This will be a double cap in favor of Warchild. They're now pushing up into Bravo, but at the same time, Cream Girl sees one on Alpha, takes one out. Will he take the second one out? He does. A nice devil taking out Blackzilla. Warchild going for this really nice double play right here. They will be able to see and I believe right now. Yes, there it is. So they were able to cap C and B both at the same time. They left one player back at A. And earlier in the day, if you remember, like I was saying, uh, you know, these teams, they don't need to leave two or three players back to hold the flag. No. All they really need to do is leave one guy there. He kind of lets this team know, hey, they're pushing really hard on my flag. Go push something else. And that's exactly what happened. Organics was like, hey, I got two guys on me. Uh, so his other guy went to the flag cap for free. While the other three were capping C. And uh, now, uh, you know, Crimson is going to have to try and do the same. We have uh, one that's sitting back behind C flag. He ended up missing all of his shots on Garrett. And now when Garrett knows that he's there, and I guarantee he's going to get back raised if he's not careful, although he's going to be watching that stair, so he should be okay. At the same time, B flag is now going to be taken by three players from Crimson. So it's just he's just going back and forth right now. Neither of these teams are really able to set up any kind of a line. The only one was War Child, and that was early on in the game. Warchild is still holding Charlie with two on Charlie and then two potentially pushing up around Alpha. Who is that last guy on Alpha? Garrett is pushing up. Only one defender, now 2v1 in favor of Warchild. Takes out Blackzilla. They are going to take back Alpha. However, in this big merry-go-round, Crimson's already taken back Charlie. Guys, this is all about, about repositioning and, and trading up flags. Actually, right now Yes. Not trying to hold anything. Uh, they're not able to do anything like that. Now, if we look at the KDs, the KDs are actually not that loud. There's nobody's really standing out all no. that much uh, within the KDs. And, uh, you know, now we're finally going to be seeing Warchild going for, for a triple. triple cap. Maybe. Uh, they got a couple of really good picks there. Uh, it's 89 to 75, so it's still a very, very close game. And remember, guys, we're doing this on tickets. So as long as it's you know, Crimson and Crimson do lose this, as long as we burn them down to a match. Organics goes down, but they know that they're pushing on Charlie. Lots of nades. How will Razor respond? He knows there's quite a few of them there. He does take out one. But it's now 88 to 58, 30 ticket lead for Warchild. And Crimson is only on Charlie. They gotta get it somewhere else. They have to start pushing elsewhere. It's not about engaging the enemy head on the fight it's about using the flanks getting the air flags and getting that that ever so slight incremental bleed yeah and now warchild pushing way way too far up i believe that was organics uh decided to try to push way too far up into showroom it's a, uh, allowing crimson to get a back spawn now he was getting up by three but the fact is that you cannot just give him away those positions it's just very important spots that you can't just uh, the one that's always able to clean up uh, the last two players that were over on the same fight. But uh, Organics is going to be right back there. Ends up getting the res actually on K Rake, and they're going to be burning this flag down super fast. Throws to be caught out of position as well as free. Free gets taken down and trades out with Organics. So now the C flag is not going to be capped. It's going to be and there's nobody back there going to cap on B flag. It's getting heavily contested. Two players from Warchild ended up going down. There's going to be Garrett and Razor. So uh, Crimson. Looking to, uh, to push back over here onto A flag. Cream is the only one left back up because the spawn on him ends up going down. And now it's going to be all up to Razor to try and stop this onslaught. Yes, going to Razor. 11 and 6 doing pretty well for himself. He's on Alpha. He knows that there's people pushing him. But he does get side flanked and taken out rather handedly. Alpha and Charlie are both being contested by Crimson. No Warchild guys on Bravo. They've lost Alpha most certainly. And Charlie's about to be taken. A triple cap for Crimson. 
With 79 to 25 remaining, you're looking at 50 ticket lead for Warchild, but the triple cap is a going against him. I gotta tell you what, if they can hold this right here, Dash, if they get their points, there's only two players left. Oh, well, one goes, that's project goes down. Brown is the only one left up. If they could have held that, held that triple cap for about another 10 seconds more, they would have been right back in this game. Uh, no problem. And they're going to give up A right there. Three players are going to be yes. up on A. They got to get on C now. They got to kill this last player. Okay, now they have C. Let's reposition back up onto B flight. They need to get one over in towards They got to get there faster. They got to get there faster. And one over in the statue. And they are trying to make it over there. Uh, it's going to be Razor Ooh. and K-Rig making their way there. It's only going to be one player. Black Silla ends up getting that one. Not the last person Will he get a gonna triple on area. this? Blackzilla with a nice grenade kill kills Razor, but here comes K Rake. Will he get something here? He pre fires into it. Oh, he's so low, he does get a kill assist. K Rake's down. They have the bleed in their favor. 52 21, a 30 ticket lead for Warchild. But a few minutes ago, it was 50. This is going in Crimson's favor, but they have to hold this. Yeah, they do, and they're losing C right now. So we're going to be seeing another big push over here onto A flight. They're going to be flipping sides. Uh, we do not need to be seeing more than one player burning it. They've got to get back up there. Onto B flag, it's 45 to 21. They are still in this game. They can still win it, or at the very least, draw them down a lot more tickets. A lot about 20 more tickets, although they missed their chance by having back spawns over there uh, on to uh, that A flag, trying to go over there through shops. And so now they're going to lose the lead. The players going to go back in the push out's favor. And look at that wrap. One, two, three players oh. in the push out, all pushed up. Now three of them do end up going down. Yes. Uh, the only ones left. Carry's the only one left. And, and he's died his time, and although he does get taken out, a flank by Blackzilla. He is, uh, this is still going, it uh, was in favor of Crimson, but Warshot's still in this. They have Alpha, Alpha Charlie, they can start leading it down. They have a lot of their players. How many players? They got three, four of their players on Charlie Point. This is the big inflection point. Wow. k -Rick gets a double, but are there more? There are still more remaining. Oh, no. Going on onto that A flag. I kind of like what uh, what Crimson was doing there. They, they basically had pushed A really hard. They knew that the majority of the War Child players were going to be back there. What they ended up doing was distracting them enough so that one player could tap C. The problem was is that they weren't able to get spawns on fast enough back to C flag to try and hold it. And now War Child is about to end this game. Yes. About to get the triple. No K Rake had no opposition on Bravo. He just jumps right in. And he ends up getting 29 to 3 and counting. Final score will be 29 to 0 in favor of Warchild, round one. And that, that was a very, very good match right there. It was. Uh, unfortunately, Crimson coming back there towards the end, but they just weren't able to they weren't able to hold their positioning. They 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 were pushing way too far up. They got a couple of back spawns in on them. And there towards the end, they they were a little bit too aggressive. Uh, if they if they had pulled the thing is, is if you could stay towards the middle of the map on that one. Uh, kind of, kind of, just send one or two guys out on the fringes to cap the flags, and then make sure you get back to the middle. That's what you need to do. You need to be able to shift from side to side. B is your, your basically your hub. That's your, 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 um, your hinge, if you want to call it that. And the problem was they're they getting way too one-sided on on either C or A, and that allowed Warchild to go up there and just cap it with very little effort at all. Yes. Now we are going into round two soon. Just waiting for it. And guys, there's a the camera. We are here live in Atlanta. Atlanta Land Fest. This is, uh, this is the semifinals. Crimson versus Warchild. This is going to be round two on Siege of Shanghai. The only rule you got to remember about this Siege of Shanghai map is for this tournament, no rooftops allowed. Mm -mm, no that's, rooftops allowed. No and rooftops that, allowed. And, and it really does change the dynamic of that map. Most of the time, the strong points are going to be CB. But what we saw from that is really, you can play this map from any side when there are no rooftops. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, you just want to cap B and whatever the other flag is. Uh, and that's what we saw there a lot of the times. And, and I, I, I really do like that. You know, it doesn't force you to have to play one side of the map all the time. And that's what those rooftops really do. Now, obviously, we're going to be seeing uh, War Child getting the better spawns on this one. It'll be interesting to see how many they sent to A. Like I said before, the most times you see maybe one go to A, one go over into Statue, and then the other three push straight up into C. They already got that B cap. They don't have to worry about it. It's going to be up to Crimson here to really come out with a bang to try and get out of this initial two cap. We are live. Three-man push by uh, Crimson on the far right side. Will it be stopped? 
on the free cam. The trees go down. One crimson goes down. Other crimson guy. Who is that? He's uh, Verwan is pushing up against K. Rick. Ends up taking out K. Rick. This is his opportunity to push on to, uh, Alpha, but he's got to act fast. Warchild will be reacting very quickly. Warchild already knows that he's back there. That's, that's not going to be an issue. They know, hey, we got at least one, maybe two back there. Actually, just a spawn bomb. Yeah, he does have a spawn bomb. Two. So nice job there. And Black also going down. So A5 will be staying in the possession of Warchild yes. at the moment. Now, um, the problem right there with that particular move from uh, Crimson is that they left the city wide open. They lost three players. The other two weren't able to hold it. And now they're going to be a very, very fast triple cap. Yeah, going to Project. Uh, he uh, does get taken out going to. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, Ver1. He is. Excuse me, Verone. Haha. -ha. He is sort of pushing on Bravo. Going around. Trying to get a few picks. Does almost take out Organics, but he himself gets taken out. Going to Gax's spot. He's also in the same position, pushing up on Bravo. Uh, 182 to 193 in favor of Warchild. And then, ooh. Freak, though, is still up. He's trying to kick out K-Rake. Oh, no. So many guys there. Organics, though, does take him out, gets out the pistol, tries to clean it up, but no success. Crimson's going to come out on top on that trade, and they're finally going to get two flags on the board. Uh, or actually, was that Warchild right there? That was no, that was Warchild. That so, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so, they were not in the game, and they are really, really lacking. I mean, it's 148 to 190. They have to beat 29 They don't think if they lose this amount, I mean, that, that's just that much work that they have to do later on in the game. Yes. Back into it. Now, we'll be seeing uh, Gax's spot. Ooh, Cream versus Gaxis. Oh, what a what a shot with the pistol. Uh, the QSC 92 uh, does take out one taken back Alpha. This is the, the first time they may get on the board. Well, at the same time, Charlie is being taken uh, by two Warchild guys. Let's go to uh, uh, Verone. He is actually on Bravo, but the bleed's not in their favor anymore. Someone's still here, and he just found him. Yeah, but the way they played them was really awesome. The way they set up initially, uh, obviously they didn't win their gunfight, so that's not good. But no. um, they, they, they kind of spread out over to the They got kind of in the there. And then they wow. ended up tapping A flag, and they shifted over towards C. They were able to respond. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Reinforcements coming in. Project going ham, a three kill on Bravo. He's doing quite well for himself. He does see a few pushing up, but does he know that there's actually four pushing up? Oh, Organics, so, uh, uh, so lucky getting around, uh, in this very, uh, own is last one up on Charlie. There are a few still pushing, but do they know that they're pushing around the flank? Yeah, and now we're going to be seeing B-Flag getting taken. I don't like that. We've seen B-Flag, the crucial flag to have. That's the one that you want to keep all the time. And C-Flag, you can trade those all day long. Mm -hmm. So those are the back And with losing B, have the the opportunity for having back spots, and that's exactly what we saw there. Cream, uh, as well as uh, Catamaran, just spawned back behind C flag. And so now, basically, Crimson has to play on four fronts to uh, to fight them off while having this game. Going to Project, he does see K-Rig. Had a really good opportunity, does end up killing k Rake with the M9, but he gets taken out. Uh, surprised he wasn't able to close the deal as fast as I would have expected. But Organics also trying to go for a revive. Perhaps Gax takes him out. The uh, Alpha is being taken by Razor from Warchild. Waiting for more to push on up. The, the flag stopped. He knows there's, some, there's someone here. He gets taken out by Freak, I believe. Oh my gosh. Deaths are everywhere. All but one of Warchild's players are down. This is what Crimson needs 124 to 152. They're only down by 25 tickets. Yeah, they're starting to slowly but surely bring that back in. They're, it, it looks like they're winning, or they're sticking together. They're winning, you know, a lot of those team fights. If you look at the KDs on their scores, they're all pretty much even for the most part. They've been helping out each other quite a bit. If you look over at Warchild, there's two people that have been standing out to go for Ganis and Gary. And, um, you know, as we're seeing, the, the, the team fights are going into the favor of uh, Crimson. Now, Warchild is going to push down onto A flag, uh, and it looks like they're going to go for a triple cap, and they are not going to be able to get it at the no. last second. The alpha uh, does get taken. Yeah, so uh, it is going to go into the, back to the favor of 
uh, uh, but Dax is, Dax is, is. He's in the back. Will he get anything here? He's looking around. Oh, but there's no one there. He's just waiting. We're, we're, uh oh. Cream Girl does get taken out, not by Gaxus, but one of his teammates. They are. Okay, here's a triple cap, albeit temporarily. But as we can see, Blackzilla, last one up on Charlie. He's sort of just running around, trying to go to Bravo instead, but does get taken out. Going to Project, though, he is. He's still up. Oh, he sees one, sees two. Any pistol kills? No. Yeah, we're actually They did, on, on the opposite side. Organics is pushing up, but will they go? He goes for a revive. This is risky. He knows that there's enemies nearby. Oh, Cream Girl takes out one, perhaps two. Going to Freak. He goes down just as fast. Oh, no. That is four of five Crimson players down. They are respawning like crazy on Charlie. A triple cap in favor of Warchild. 93 to 113 in favor of Warchild. 20 ticket lead. Oh. No. Oh. No. He doesn't. Warchild still holding this triple. Uh, the ticket's bleeding very fast. 40 ticket lead now for Warchild. 113 to 71. What what is what is Crimson doing? They have some spawn. They have some uh, odd spawns on the outskirts of C and outskirts of Alpha. This may be their opportunity to uh, start pinching in. Project on Charlie Point does take out Cream Girl, but will he be able to hold this? It's grayed out, but yeah, he is taking it. Favor of Crimson. Oh. Razor trying to push on a Charlie. He goes down. This hold is continuing. Going to, to K Rig from Warchild. They are taking back Charlie. They do end up getting it back. 49 to 89. It's 30 ticket lead for Warchild. It's still in one's game, but remember, Warchild won by. It's very risky. Yes. They have to win. They have to win by 30, or if they if they can win by 20, or by by 19 or higher, they they will go to a a a, a sudden death round. But it's already 30. It's not going to happen. Right now. They're, 
They're winning their team fights, they're not winning those one-on-one -on -one fights. Yes. And right now, you have to Ooh. win those one-on-one -on -one fights. Four. Oh, they're all, all almost all of Crimson are down. They're spawning back in just as fast as they're dying. 76 to 25. Bravo is being taken by Warchild. A triple cap in favor of Warchild. Guys, I think this is over. Yep, that is it. It's 76 to 18. That is the final score, or the final uh, nail in the coffin, if you will. Uh, all triple cap. Crimson is now down for the count. There is no way they're going to be able to come out of this uh, as the winners. They put up one heck of a fight, don't get me wrong, but it really, it, it, it was like... They started to play like they should, it was all coming together, and then all of a sudden, they're like, ah, let's forget about it. Yeah, just, let's yeah, forget about it. Was, uh, they they kind of got a little bit frazzled there. Uh, they, they didn't, they know what to do, they don't, they probably don't have a shot caller there to make it happen. And, yes. Uh, that's one of the things that I didn't mention about this, is that uh, some of the guys on Crimson haven't played together uh, in quite some time. In fact, Project, I think, has never played with that particular lineup. No, he, 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 he may have not. Warchild, though, does win uh, the semifinals. They will go to the finals. Warchild versus Exertus, Team 1. We'll be playing... Now, I actually don't know. I mean, is it, is it, we, have, we have to figure out, is it best of three maps? Is okay, it, so, yeah, we have not confirmed if it's going to be a best of three maps or if it's going to be a predetermined mm -hmm. set of maps. And then it's the first... If the winner brackets gets to two, uh, they automatically win. Or if it's the... Yes, we we need to find that out, and so let's uh, we're gonna take a brief intermission, uh, just a few minutes, guys. I swear, I usually say a few minutes. It turns to be an hour, but it's not. I uh, we just gotta fi figure out what the the maps are one and whether and what the actual format is for the finals just so that we make sure we convey the right information to you guys so be back in just a bit yeah we'll be back in just a few moments guys
All right, guys, we are back. Uh, I am joined here with Two, Di Two Dice Samurai from from Exertus. Uh, we're going to do a little interview first because we got about 10, 15 minutes until the finals start. Exertus is one of the two teams in the finals. Uh, Two Dice Samurai, how's it going? It's not going too bad today. You Good know, to hear. It's been, a, it's been a great run for playing with the vehicle guys today. I enjoyed that a lot, and, you know, we finished fourth place overall today. Yes. And, yeah, it was definitely definitely a good run coming in here. But I'm looking forward to the finals with our main North American team. It's definitely going to be a great match. Oh, yes. Now, guys, I don't know if you guys know this. Exertus has uh, our North American uh, team as an EU team. Uh, and, and, and Tudor Samurai, you sort of what, explain what y you do with Exertus. I'm the battlefield director with Exertus Esports. I pretty much help to oversee and make sure that everything is running smoothly, make sure everything is taken care of prior to the matches and things like that. Um, and even during really anything else. I'm there if players need me uh, to fill in for practice, to fill in for matches, whatever they need. Um, as you said before, also, we also do have a vehicle team for the EU team. Yes, yes. So we and technically have four battlefield teams. Yes, and I, and I do like I do like the fact that Exertus, uh, as a team, does both. They do 5-5, five five, they do 10-10. Ten They're willing to you know, try anything, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and so uh, you were on Exertus' vehicle team for this. You placed fourth. Um, how, what were your expectations like for coming into this? I mean, your vehicle guys, I mean, did you think you had much of a shot? Honestly, I thought we did. We, we, there was a lot of prep time that went into it, and I owe a lot of that to Exertus Phantom as he, from the EU team who helped me prep and get a lot of things ready. Um, my goal today was actually to place in the top three. Came close enough Oh, came four. close. Right, definitely came close. It Kind of a bad turn of events, I guess you could say that, but... I honestly thought that we'd be able to hold our own, and I feel that we did. I feel yeah. that we put up good scores during some of our matches. Yes, very very close matches indeed. Now we will see in the finals Exertus first Warchild. Now have how has Warchild Exertus battled each other in the past? I mean, either in events or to scrimmages, or it's been more more in scrimmages and um, matches like that. More of the the um, actually the EU team, if I'm not mistaken, lost to Warchild in the Level BF tournament. Oh. Right. Is that, I think I think I think that was true. Right. Uh, they 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 but. did, but but Warchild never played the North American Correct. team. They've never played no. the North. And American this is the North American team, team that we're going to be watching until earlier today. They did not play us though in the vehicle team. Oh yes. So I think this is going to be very exciting. Are there any maps that uh, you think the Exertus in a infantry guys are looking forward to? <laughs> no, in the infantry, they're gonna they're, they're gonna they're pretty much gonna play everything that they're good at on infantry. They're not they're not like oh man, if we have to play Dawnbreaker, we're right. gonna be in trouble. The maps that they're gonna have issues with are maps that are typically the ones that are excluded from matches: flood zone, high non resort maps like that. So. Yes, yes. And going to the chat though, let's just see a little bit about what people are, are saying. Uh, people are saying no, just saying little things here and there. You know, uh, I'm not wearing an. I don't think either of us are wearing. Wife beaters, so I don't know where that came from. Oh, but Tiger lives. He always says inappropriate things. So, uh, but but uh, nevertheless, what uh, things are coming up for Exertus uh, in the next few uh, months, be it online or LAN or other kinds of events that you're sort of looking forward to in the Battlefield franchise or otherwise? Something I'm personally really looking forward to is our EU team going into the EMS1 tournament. Oh, yeah, that's right. That is, that is going to be great. They got the invite, and they're ready to go for that. Very uh, cool. We have a very good EU team and a UK team that I'm hoping is going to be pretty now good. Now, the Exertus EU t guys sent a contingent mm -hmm. to DreamHack, but it wasn't yes. the full team, right? Correct. Yeah, it was not the full team. Uh, there were some issues that occurred uh, with people getting passports in the short period of time that it was needed. So they pulled a couple ringers together, but it was the bulk of the team. Uh, Revo was one of the main players that went. Uh, I do not know off the top of my head who else, but if I'm not mistaken, it was also Hads and Bambi, I think, went too. Yes. So it was the three of the three of the five were the main players that went. Yeah, I I have to say that that I think some of the European teams um, may have gotten the the, the, the bad uh, a bad sort of representation of what Exertus is capable of. Yes. When you're when you're playing two men down, it can be a bit difficult at times. Uh, even good ringers are not the same as having your core players with you, the ones that you practice with, the ones that you know, on how they're going to react. No doubt. I agree. It, it makes a big difference when we have all five starters together. They, they know the chemistry, they play very well, and their communication is flawless. When you bring in two ringers, it does become very hard, and it's, it's, it's definitely a challenge. It, it, it always is. It is indeed. So, um, I think we will be going uh, live soon, and so, uh, Two Dice Samurai, any shout-outs before we go? Absolutely. I, you know, I'd love to give a shout out to the vehicle guys that I played with today, and especially to Exertus Phantom. Phantom, you know, you definitely helped us out there, and of course to Mad Dog. 
Matt, oh, yes. I appreciate you guys, you know, what you do for us and everything else like that. You guys can feel free to check us out, www.exertycsports.com. we got a YouTube and Twitch going Yeah, ch check it all out, guys. Uh, and from there... Uh, we gotta go. The, we gotta go live soon. So again, thank you much, thank you Two Dice Samurai. Master. I appreciate uh, it. We can get a little handshake. There you go. I appreciate that. And now it's time for switch it out All because right. Brett's given me the stink eye. He <laughs> wants his spot. I'll pass this back to you. Thank you, Daskra. All right, guys. We are be going live real soon um, to the event. Come on, Brett. Have a seat. Don't give me that. There you go. So Brett's. There's Brett. Okay, guys, I am back. So we are going to be going live here in just a few moments. We are yes. going to change the servers up and uh, get it in there. It's going to be Exertus, the first team, the main team, versus Warchild. Now, uh, these guys had just got done playing a few matches ago on Dawnbreaker. Came down very, very close. Warchild actually traded on uh, on that particular round, winning the first one by 14 tickets. Yes. And then losing the second one by 25. So it was a very, very close match there. I and say, one of the closest that we've seen here uh, today. It was uh, pretty close, although I must ask, Brett, can you uh, explain to our uh, viewers what the finals entails from a, from a procedure perspective? What are we going to see? What what maps would, will we see? What How many games will we play? What what, what does it all, all entail? Yeah, so what we're going to be seeing today is uh, it's going to be a best of three matches. Uh, so that means that you have to win two, uh, two maps. Um, you, you don't have to win them in a row, but you have to win two maps out of the three in order to take it. The first map, uh, it was a map chosen by Exertus. It is going to be, uh, it's going to be lock, Operation Lockers. The second map, which was chosen by Warchild, is going to be uh, Paracel Storms. And the third and final map is going to be one that they already clashed on. It's going to be Dawnbreaker. Oh. That is going to be the final. So if they take it to a third map, it's going to be a rematch, and I'm hoping an epic one at that. Yes. It's going to be pretty exciting stuff going on. And uh, so, <clears throat> basically, it's going to be the same thing as we did last time. It's going to be ticket-based, uh, same rules as that goes, uh, but, but it's going to be by match. So, basically, we're going to have a possibility of three matches going on within one for the finals. It's uh, going to be very, very tense. It's going to be very tense because i, I, I got to say, War Child has an opportunity to come and win this. They've done very well. They just got off of a really good win versus Crimson. They've been, they've been, they've been warm. Throughout the entire time, because see, they they played in the losers bracket. Yes. They, they had to play, you know, two extra teams. They uh, are warmed so up. Kind of just been sitting yeah, we we're waiting. They've been waiting. Some people that that affects some people it doesn't, but you know, uh, I certainly have felt it. You know, when I have to wait for a while, I yes. can't just go straight into a game. You know, I have to warm up a little bit. And yes. If I have to go up against you know somebody like Warchild who's been on fire so far. It's going to be a little bit of a daunting task right there. It very well, it, it, it very well could have the potential. I I am trying to load in the server right now. Are you in the server yet? I am not in the server. For some reason, it is giving me some yep. yep. So we are going to be restarting the server here. Yeah, server restart. So in the meantime, let's go into the brackets just so we can take a look at them. Yeah, let's take a look at these brackets where we've had a storied Get this out of here. so far. In round number one, we have Warchild moving on uh, versus the Jonan Austin squad. Exertus 2 versus Crimson, uh, where uh, Crimson ended up taking that one on Paracel Storm. And then Exertus, the main team, ended up uh, taking out New Fab City 496 to 0. So Ooh. That's right Ooh. There. Um, and then uh, down in the loser's bracket, round number one, uh, Exertus vehicles able to take out. Uh, oh, New, New Fab City just couldn't catch a break. Not catching a break at all. Got some really good teams right off the break there. Uh, and then moving on over there to. Uh, for the next match, we're going to be seeing in losers bracket round two, Crimson versus Joan and Austin squad. Again, Crimson coming out on top. Exertus two vehicles beating Easy Bake Oven, and then also moving on to round number three. Round number two for the winners bracket, though, came as War Child moving on, and uh, also Crimson beating or uh, Crimson playing the main Exertus team, losing out on Mockers. And honestly, that came down to the fact that Crimson just wasn't. They were making the same mistakes on Locker that they were making on the siege map. They, they just were not able to, to get the positioning. They were they made a lot of really, really bad mistakes. There were times when they could have pushed up into lab, and they didn't. They ended up trying to pull back and, and recapture certain flags. And, you know, the name of the game on Domination isn't really uh, as much as to take it to hold it. It's, it's to take it and then hold it. Until just long just enough. Can't. And yes. And, and you, you, I mean, yeah, it's it's knowing when to 
hold them and knowing when to fold them. Yeah, to use a text, a poker game reference. Game mode, you, you do that quite often. I mean, that's, that's, that's what you do all the time. And then, of course, we had that amazing match, Warchild versus Exertus in the semifinals uh, uh, winner's bracket, going down the 14-25. That was an amazing match right there. Loser's bracket, round number three, Crimson uh, versus Exertus Vehicles, 152. Uh, it, it, that was a pretty good match. I mean, Exertus had the opportunity. They just didn't have the experience. I mean, let's be honest with you. They had four vehicle players playing against five infantry guys. I mean, the only infantry player they had was Dai. And, uh, you know, even Dai was making mistakes, you know, because he just hasn't been scrimming and playing all that often. Uh, and it definitely showed up throughout that match. And then, of course, in the semifinals, we just witnessed Crimson losing out by, uh, was, was it 50 tickets? It, uh, it was, it was, I, I didn't catch the last of it, but I imagine it's about, oh, that's about right. I believe, I, I thought Warchild won the first round. Warchild did win the first round by 30 tickets? Yeah, so it should have actually been by 100 tickets. 100 tickets, that they not won. 50. So that yes. That was a miss, uh, missed click right there on that particular one. But, uh, you know what, that's okay because Warchild is now going to be moving on in the grand finals against Exertus. So it's going to be a very exciting matchup here. Let's see what is going to uh, to come out of this. Now remember, guys, we are going to be uh, we are going to be uh, casting the Timmy Tins uh, shortly after this. So, uh, oh yeah, Timmy Tins. That's going to be fun. Around. We are going to be having some awesome Timmy Tin action uh, coming out, and uh, definitely looking forward to that. And definitely appreciate everybody, all of the guys that have come out. And, and watch all the, all, all the viewers from the stream. Thank you. Really, really thank you. You know, uh, without your support, obviously, we wouldn't be here. You know, and, uh, you know, and if you guys want to support us even more, uh, just scroll down a little bit more. You'll see a donate button uh, there on PayPal. Go ahead and hit that. And anything that you guys would be willing to donate would, would help us. We're trying to build a website right now. Uh, trying to make uh, all kinds of features for esports for our 32 32s for our, our cups, our chopper cups, our, our jet uh, cups, all kinds of stuff to pay for our team speaks. Um, it, it helps us out more than we think. It really does take a lot to run the kinds of events and uh, things that we have. So uh, anything that's going to be helpful uh, to anybody else that would be willing to use donate for anything like that. And then, uh, of course, you know, thank you to the Atlanta Land guys. Yes. They, they providing this venue. I mean, you know, we wouldn't be here, obviously, if they weren't putting the effort into holding this. And remember, this was for charity. So, all of the money that uh, went to the athletes and to the, uh, the event uh, for, for entry fees goes into charity. I believe it was $4,700 that we were able to raise this week. It's pretty awesome stuff there. Not too shabby for a few days. Yeah, so guys, we will be going live real soon. We have four of the five players in. Uh, Exertus is still missing, still missing one player playing Operation Locker. And guys, just to recap, Operation Locker, you have two flags on the inside, Alpha and Bravo. You have one flag on the outside, and Charlie with the helo pad. And as Brett has mentioned before, at the Alpha Charlie hold, holding Alpha and Charlie and creating a great line where you can cover all the various flanks, uh, is a uh, a great a, a great tactic if you can set it up right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we should be getting going live here in just a few moments. Uh, the ticket counts do need to be reset. Oh, the ticket the ticket counts do need to be reset. So let's get on that. Yes, let, just. Let me just uh, give the word out. All right, guys, just waiting for the last guy to jump in. We're going to fix the tickets because the tickets are not uh, right right now. But we're going to get that fixed. As we uh, mentioned before, we do have, uh, I don't know who's going to start which. I imagine that we will see, I imagine we'll see Warchild on our use side first, but we'll see. We, they, they made the reset the server because of the issues of the tickets. They got to be 200, 200 tickets? Yeah. That's right. 200 tickets. Going to k Rake. He's, what's he doing? He got some dog tags, but they're blank. The dog tags are, oh, no, wait, K-Rake's getting more. Taking mad dogs. Nameless. Anonymous dog tags. Anonymous dog tags. 
Yeah, they are nameless. They are they are blank. Did he really knife a man? He's pointing at J Rod to knife him. He does knife another one. But he goes down. Alright, so just sending out some tweets here, guys. Yeah, I should send some tweets out too. Have been all like, why are we seeing tweets? Well, it's because we've been busy, so that's that's uh -huh. But uh, uh we're gonna be getting as many of these things out as we possibly can. Hey, guys, share this with as many people as you possibly can. Oh yeah. Uh, there's only so many people that we can actually message and uh, remember to uh so uh, we do appreciate all of you guys sharing our events. We'll definitely do so. Guys, we are restarting. Is this live? T tickets are right. Nope, when we'll restart. Okay, so we should be going live here in just a few moments. All right. All right, so let's see what we're going to be getting into here. Now, as Dashko was saying, uh, the, the strong sides on this are going to be A and C flag to hold. B flag is kind of the flag that you don't want to be caught at right now. It's, uh, it's been very, very... Uh, uh, okay. it's, a, it's a trap, basically. Okay. As we're seeing here where they're spawning in, that's going to be uh, a war child there. It's a very, very bad uh, spawn trap to get in. Very hard to get these random spawns out towards C, uh, and even over here towards A. Uh, we will be seeing some pushes going in towards C initially. Uh, probably a two, three-man push coming out there. Um, one into B, and then one following up right here into uh, elbow uh, and some metal detectors. Uh, but uh, pretty, pretty standard breakout over there for the uh, the U.S. team. For the Russian team, we'll probably see two going in over into A. They're mainly going to be holding it down. One into J. Uh, two going out to see, possibly actually three going out to see. Maybe see one. Yes, I don't think this is live, by the way. I think and, uh, I think we're doing one more restart. Oh yeah, one more restart. We, yes, we are not live right now. But um, one more restart. They're all dead. Yeah, one more restart. But and, and then we're also going to be seeing some guys out over towards Hill and uh, trying to push up into Fan to try and get to, to uh, hold on to C flag. Uh, we will be seeing probably some flag hopping going on, but not as much as last time. It's going to be kind of like, uh, you know, Dawnbreaker is where you're not really flipping flags as much. You're kind of just, uh, you're holding on to as many as you possibly can. Every now and then, you'll flip them. And uh, this is going to be live, guys. Yes. Uh, right now, so uh, we are going to be watching. Yeah. All right. We're going to be watching Warchild over onto the U.S. side, or the Russian side. Russian side. So let's see what they're going to be making out of this. Honestly, I think that they have the better side this time. If they can get out in front of Exertus, they really have a good chance of taking this first uh, first round against them. Yes. 18 seconds remaining, and we get going. That is right. We are here in the Atlanta Land Fest, or at the Atlanta Land Fest, for the Grand Finals 5v5 Domination Tournament. Very exciting stuff here, guys. We've been here all day. All day. I think we started, uh, I was up at 8 o'clock. We were, we, were, we, we were here by like 9.30 or so. Yes, here we go. Four. They're not what are they, what are they doing? Going to Captain Garrett. It's almost like Cream Girls just waiting for someone to, to peek it. Oh, he's pushing it. Cream Girl takes out one. Takes out Elegy, now going back for the alpha pull. Oh. Oh. No. No. Yes. Yes. I, I don't. I mean, Cream Girl got was able to get a really good kill uh, as uh, as Warchild or uh, as Exodus pushed on up, but he wasn't able to cap Alpha, and I think that did cost them. Well, what I think he possibly was trying to do was, was fake them into thinking that they were going to five-man push to C. Yes. And then bait him in there. But honestly, Exodus, 
you can't do that with these areas. No. Because most of the time they're going to be pushing two players up in there and they only see one anyways. Uh, but now Matt Ooh. Barney is going to be back in there by himself trying to hold off four cat and carrot. But we'll be seeing a slight back range over here through cuts. And that is going to be the... Uh, or are... Organic gets a double, gets taken out, but there's two. Oh my god, Captain Garrett sees one. He sees... Oh! He wasn't able to complete it against Reptile. Oh. There's so much action going on, but it looks like K-Rake was able to come in at the last second and clean it up and get all of those down. So in fifth for a second, we did have a possible triple cap for the board shot. Yes. They now have control of A, so now the ball is in their court. The table's has turned. How are they going to set up? How are they going to try and fit this flag? They are. K Rick is holding it down. He turned the lights down. He wants it a bit more romantic. Does see one? Romantically kills one, but takes. Uh, he gets taken out himself. Razor also gets taken out as Exertus, as you mentioned, pushing real hard in Alpha. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not really sure what Warchild was thinking there. Um, they are going to be pushing into B flag. Now, it's not like you can't take it, but it's really not the flag that you want. Um, they had a chance to hold on to A, a solid hold on A. Uh, instead, they elected to just leave it open. They never really Yes. Okay. Although I like K Rick, he's on Alpha. <laughs> Is he going to get anything out of this? He's being super sneaky. Yeah, I don't think they realize. Oh, they're right next to each other. They're right next to each other. Do they know they're right next to each other? Will k look to his left? No, he does take out Mad Dog, but he didn't look to his left. Didn't clear his corners. And it does look like Exertus, uh, or Exertus failed on holding that. Workshop will be able to have A back. He's going to have control of A still, but Reptile was able to sneak through J. He's having to come up Oh, I like Reptile. Look at this position. No. Nice. Reptile. It is. It is going to Razor. Will he be able to take out? Uh, he does take out J Rod, but he's he's all alone. Where are the other bad dudes? There's two on Alpha. He has to make the decision. Is he going to push on Alpha or help his buds at Bravo? He may going back to his. Uh oh, he went through the medical the metal detector. Does get a Ace 23 kill on Reptile. A lucky headshot, but. Begins to get fl uh, flanked by Lead Machine, and now he's down. Yeah, and now Warchild is trying to kind of poke in. They, they don't really know where to go right now. Uh, they've sent a couple of guys into B flag. That was unsuccessful. They had a two man push into A. That didn't work. They spread out a little bit too much. Honestly, at the moment, I don't think it's just to press out to B. Uh, they've actually ex expended two players trying to go into a fence right now uh, into B flag, and that was not working. Now another one going down into J. That's a big. That's a big push by uh, Warchild on the back of Alpha. A uh, lots of explosions are, are about, but uh, the bleed's still against him. It's 146 to 109. They're up. Oh, they're down by 37 tickets. So they do have the two flag burned back into their favor uh, six minutes into this game. But you know what? Nobody is out there to defend it. Now we're going to be seeing Exertus in that very powerful AC hold here in just a few moments. 
Oh, but we do have organics. With the wide open, uh, uh, he's going to push straight up into A. And Zeus did this exact thing versus uh, Crimson. The only problem was is that Crimson never took advantage of it. So now we're seeing Warchild, who is a slightly better team at the moment, able to go back in there. They capped A. And honestly, if they are smart about this, they'll be swinging back out towards Hill and be able to take C back for the team and, and get back to that AC hold. Yes, staying on our organics, 134 to 98, does get taken out. They're still down by quite a few. Yeah, this is very frustrating. So, after I just got done saying that, poor child then leaves A. He sent the guy out towards Who? J, he ends up getting taken down. Organics decides to go down to elbow towards B. He ends up getting shot. They're trying to flag hop too much. I think I think they're, they're, they're doing the pendulum effect, okay? It feels Before, like it. They were trying to lock down too much. Now they're trying to flag hop too much. They, they gotta find that hack medium in there and, and just go into the game themselves. They had that two flag cap. And they K Rake with a double ends up taking up out on Bravo. Will he go for revive? Oh, he went for the revive and lead machine. They're ready. Fighting that with a scar ends up taking him out. Yeah, and now uh, Warchild will have another opportunity at A. Hopefully, they will. Ooh, I do like this push. Okay, so they left the guy back there at Jimsy. Now he's going to push up into J. I'm um, really seeing a slight push from the front. He starts oh. into Med Lab or into MT. A pinch right here from Cuts. So three no. players from Warchild, they're going to be pinched out really bad right here. Two of them are going to be back up. Snake is now going to be occupied by Lead Machine. He's going to try and come in here and uh, do as much as he can. Takes out Creamy. So he's not going to be a three on one into Med Lab. Wow. Yeah. Ra Razor's being being pushed from both sides. How is he? How is he still up? How is he? Oh, he's down. He's down. Oh, he was reloading. He's got reloading. Doesn't know which way to go just yet. He's going to be trying to go over here to mid uh, to metal detector. Should be catching Elegy right out into the open. If he does, yes. a nice pick up there. Mad Dog, the only one left back up, and he will be getting taken down. Just a few moments. Uh, Grace is going to come out, able to get him, and now A Flag is going to get burned out so, so fast. Reptile trying to come in and make something happen will not. Captain Garrett's actually holding Bravo at the same time against Lead Machine. There is, it's now 2v1. They do lose it. But he's there. He knows. He, now he can he can be he can pester it, you know, for what's worth. But no, he just gets taken out real fast. The flank uh, works against him. Oh, and look, Exertus three man push on Bravo in helicopter. They're already taken out. Leave that bleed. It's going super fast. Yeah, they, they're, they're getting onto that helipad right there, onto C flag. Uh, they are able to get the cap out uh, or get the cap on it now. Uh, Roman can see the out trying to push up. Man, nice trade there from LG for K Rig. That was a really good spot, but we had some last second spots for Exert. It's going to be coming in. It's now going to be a two on one. Razor versus Sled Machine and Mad Dog. And Sled Machine needs to pick up there, able to take that out. But now Ooh. Flag uh, is trying to get capped for. Uh, for <laughs> Look at that, go back and forth. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, they know people are here. They take out one. It's still even numbers. Now it's going in their favor, but they do get side raged. I think they both get taken out. No, nope, they actually they did stay up. Organics does get killed again. Oh no. That Wow, everyone is just is just getting wrecked on Warchild's front on Bravo. Bravo will be held by Exertus. But and they're still fighting. They're still fighting over it. <laughs> oh, organics coming in. Who's fallen? Bra As you mentioned, Bravo is being taken by Exertus. We do see Captain Garrett uh, uh, grab Charlie. But K-Rick, what are you doing? He has a choice, Alpha or Bravo. He's going towards the enemy, not away from the enemy. He does take out one. There's one left. He knows it. He does kill Lead Machine with the impact grenade. This is big. Pushing into Bravo. 
He says, I must do this. I must grab it. Eight to 36. It's a 55 ticket lead for Exert. Oh! K Rake doesn't doesn't seal the deal. It would have been huge. No. No, he doesn't. It's each other. Oh, he saw him now. Takes him out. Is 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 almost it's basically wiped at this point. They're basically wiped. This is not looking good. They got to get some really clutch random spawns in order to get even close. But it's a triple now. It's a triple cap in favor of Exertus. 79 to 20. 60 ticket lead plus, and it's not going in their favor anymore. Not not looking good for Warchild. No, it is not. They're just not going to be getting on that B burn. They have those random spawns. That is definitely going to hurt them. Mm-hmm. Uh, And here they are. Whoa! He is stopping it. Oh, but he has to stay up. Oh! Cream Girl does get taken out. Mad Dog and friends. Wow! Organics takes out two. He will start capping Bravo. It has three tickets remaining. Razor's dead. If he spawns in, makes it two. They can This. Uh, I think he has to. He has to spawn in. Sixty-eight to three, guys. Wow. Organics has to get there in time. Oh, it's over. Fifty-nine. In order to take this, uh, or, or to win this map, and they really do need to win this map. Um, they are going to be playing their map next, uh, which is going to be Paracel Storm. They've already stated that they're very comfortable on Paracel Storm. That's the one that they've been scrimming the most. And, uh, you know, they, they kind of want to go into that one knowing that uh, they already have one up on Exertus. I think you're right. This is going to be uh, tough for Warchild, but 69 tickets, 59 tickets, excuse me, is doable. It is doable in the grand scheme of things. Don't count Warchild out just yet. Yeah, you know, uh, Exertus was doing really well across the board there. We're seeing 24, 27, 24, 22, and 9 uh, for their scores. Over on Warchild's side, we're seeing 20, 15, 18, 16, and 9. Uh, so, I mean, you know, not, not bad for Exertus. Warchild yes. a little bit more in the, uh, the killing department. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they need to calm down. They're, they're, they're rushing too much. They need to stop that. They, they, I realize that, you know, it's domination. And yeah, you can flag up a lot. But they're doing it to an extent here where it's detrimental to, you know, the game. I mean, they, they, they just can't do that. Unless you have amazing, uh, unless you have amazing gun skills, it's just not sustainable. Uh, to play that kind of game on domination. Now, uh, Warchild will be having the, uh, the, I guess, the worst spawn on this particular map for now. Uh, Exertus is going to be able to have A. Uh, Let's go to it. Interesting to see. I'm, I'm going to say that we're going to have two players probably from Exertus going into A flag. Uh, one's going to be in med lab. The other one will most likely either stay next to X-ray or push out into uh, to J. And then we're going to be seeing a three-man push onto C flag to try and secure that as fast as possible. Uh, Warchild will most likely have a two-man push up into uh, to med lab or B. Uh, this is it's not live. Not live. This is not going to be live here. Uh, and then we'll probably have a uh, three-man push out to C. Possibly just a two-man push to C. One going into two to watch uh, J right there. Uh, two to try and go out to C. And they may not cap C. They may just try and, and basically pull them off of it for a while. 
Indeed. Now we are uh, just waiting for the restart. It'll happen soon, guys. We're getting there. But not a. I mean, 59 tickets. I mean, it's it's a little bit of a challenge. But if Warchild can can get a good hold, they may still have something here. A lot of a challenge? Well, it's not insurmountable. It's not like 130. It's not insurmountable, but we're talking about 60 tickets here against Exertus, where they were, I mean, I mean, they were struggling uh, against uh, Crimson there. Yes. In Siege. I mean, and I'm nothing against Crimson here, but, uh, you know, Exertus just crushed Crimson. Yes. They crushed them. And, uh, you know, for Warchild to, to, to be given up and make it to those kinds of really bad mistakes on that last one, um, you can't do that. You just can't do that. Down and, uh, and, you know, try and take it. Yes, they, they need they need to be a little bit more patient and talk it out of where they should be pushing. Use those comps together and figure it out. All right, so we should be getting going here in just a few moments. I'm not really sure what is going on. Uh, we do have all of Exertus sitting at his desk. Oh, here comes here comes a restart. This should be live on restart here in just a few moments. It is going to be second round on Operation Locker here at the Atlanta Land Fest. Definitely looking forward to what Warchild is going to do. They have to come back from 70 or 60 tickets. What they have to win by here. They do. Take this map. Now, they are going to be once again on the... Actually, uh, Is this right? We have one more restart. There'll be one more restart. Yeah, there we go. We're going to have one more restart, and then we're going to be live. So, Dastro, who are you taking for this first map? Uh, uh, well, I, I think that Exertus is going to barely pull it off. I feel like Workshop's going to win here, but I think they may only win by, like, 30 or 40 tickets. That That's what I... Maybe that's what I hope. I, I hope that's what happens. Now... I don't know if it actually will happen that way, but... I can see that as a possibility. I'm going to give it to Exertus on this one. It's their map. They picked it. Um, you can definitely tell them more comfortable on this particular map. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh, no doubt. And, and you know, we've seen Warchild picking the op more open maps. Yes. Uh, as opposed to these more constrained ones. So I think that I think that Exertus is going to win this one. Um, but I think in the next map, it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out. If Warchild can win this particular map... They, they are going to be feeling good. I mean, they are going to be having a big smile on their face because uh, they know that, hey, we're going to be going in the next map into the one that we picked we're most comfortable with. Do you, I mean, with only 10 seconds remaining, do you think that Warchel will even win this round? Do you think they'll win the round? Uh, I, don't, I don't. I think that Xerxes okay. will win this. I think that Xerxes will win this uh, and, uh, we're Ooh. not gonna be live. Not live. Once again. We lo we're losing players. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, Matt, look at Mad Dog's ping. It's super big. 133. What's the deal? What is the deal, guys? I'm not sure what's going on. The stream seems to be okay, so it's not uh, affecting us yet. Th they are reconnecting, it looks like. So, not live just yet. Uh, anyway, so Dashgrove, what are you thinking of the event so far? How, how are you like? Oh, I think it's. I think the tournament's running very smoothly in terms of, uh, in terms of the matches, and we're not. It's not two a.m., which is good, <laughs> because the last Atlanta Land Fest I went to, the BF four three did, tournament didn't start until two a.m. Yes, but, uh, I mean, we've been doing this now for, it's we, we, the events have gone on for nine hours, so we've had quite a few breaks. And all things considered, we're in the finals already. Nine hours in, that's fine. We're doing good. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm happy with the time so far. Yes. I'm not complaining whatsoever. Especially considering we had a, uh, we had a, a raffle, we had lunch breaks, we had a number of different intermissions. But guys, I think that we are getting close to going live. No, is this not this isn't right, guys. They still need to do one more restart. One more restart and we'll be going live. The pings look better. They don't look terrible. I think it's going well. 
Although, uh, I'll admit, guys, we, we had some technical issues at the beginning. A myriad of technical issues. With all of our with all of our own equipment, it actually was. It actually didn't go as. Ba it didn't go. It wasn't a train wreck. It was close though. It was a, almost a derailment, but we I, made I it. Think, honestly, though, if we had our, if we actually had all of our own equipment here, it would. Oh, it would have. It would have went smoothly, smooth as can be. But, but as it is, we actually borrowed two computers off of the uh, tournament table. Yeah, the we borrowed two computers. We, I'm using capture cards I don't usually use. Uh, and all things considered, it's doing it's doing good. We are now 40 seconds away. But guys, I didn't want to ship my EMI equipment. Although, you know, after that, maybe I will in the future. I don't know. I'll think about it. Oh, hell, maybe in the future, we'll just have Shadow Play. And Shadow Play will do it all for us. That would be amazing. That would, just be, that would be so much easier. I would love that. I would love that so much. Oh, yeah. Actually, in the future, what I would love is if we could just walk in and cast and then walk out. Yes, and not have to deal with any of the production, <laughs> which that's, is... That's what I want to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Screw that, just say everything. Let somebody yeah. else do all that. Yes. <laughs> that too. Two seconds. Let's go. War Child versus Exertus on Operation Locker. Two man push by Exertus uh, along uh, Medical on Alpha. Four man uh, push splitting it up on Charlie and to Alpha on War Child. Let's check this out and go to Captain Garrett. Will he see the dudes peeking? Yeah, that's actually a very good question. Oh, he is so low. Is he watching his right side? Oh, he does take out Lead Machine. There's still one more up. He does push it. He does take out a double. This is a big deal for Captain Garrett's team on Warchild. He is flanking around. And they get Charlie. Yes, it is. So they are going to be able to take C and B, but uh, Exertus right now is prime all, for a But look, all five of their players are on Charlie. There's no one on Bravo. Nobody on Bravo. Now, this could work if they're going for an A push. And I'm curious. Going to organics. He is watching the flank, holding Bravo Charlie. He knows that there's some fighting going on. He hears it. Yeah, now Mad Dog's going to be shifting back out uh, with Lead Machine to try and hold storage room. They do, uh, they do hold that area. Now Razor is going to be over here on to Jay. He needs to turn around. Should be getting mm -hmm. taken down. Real pretty quick. No, doesn't. Uh, looks like uh, Lead Machine. Uh oh. Uh, able to take out K Rake. Organic, so it's going to be the only one left up for Warchop to try and save B Flag. It is going to be. He is. A good, a good 3 and one hold on Bravo. Captain Garrett, though, sees uh, Lead Machine pushing up on uh, Charlie. Takes out one in a very sneaky spot. But what about the rest of the workshop, guys? They're pushing up on Bravo a bit, and at the same time, pushing up on to Alpha, going to Cream Girl on, on Bravo. Will he see the last guy? He sees one. He does take out J-Rod. They did. Wow. Wow. Cream girl almost the triple. No one's on it. Oh no, Cream girl. Oh. Possible back rage here for Lead Machine, and then a possible back rage and spawn bomb for Lead Machine onto A5 for Snake. There's one, uh, one has spawned on him thus far. He's repositioning. Going for the side on Medical. Does see Organics, pops him in the face. Organics goes down, sees Razor, gets a double. I think Alpha will be a stronghold for Exertus. If they can take it, they've got to take it, they're taking it though. Yeah, now 
Fiddlers back here in the storage. Now free for your child. Now let you know uh, is going to be able to pick up organics. Uh, Mad Dog is going to be back up over into Snake. A uh, lead machine is also going to be back up over towards metal detectors. B was going to be contested there for a few moments. That was going to be Dream Girl. Uh, but uh, they're not sitting too bad. Once every time, no. 49. They do have a for too long. LG with a nice pickup there on Razor, but K-Rate going to be coming in from behind. And oh, a bit too aggressive. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, that was a mistake that might come back to bite them. Yes. Uh, but, uh, yes and they're, they're completely off alpha. And, and, and look, almost only, only two of them are spawned in. One gets a cream girl gets a random spawn in the back of alpha. A random great spawn. They need it. Sees Mad Dog, takes out Mad Dog. He is now pushing up, rocking the AK 971. Now we're going to be seeing uh, two players. A trade. Four child trying to go into Snake. Uh, we'll be getting some reses going on. Uh, Cream Girl is going to be uh, popping back up. Uh, LG, the Wheeler back here is going to be defending. This Razor ends up going down. Uh, so it's bad timing there for uh, War Child. Not quite able to get into A just yet. And Mad Dog now able to take out Organics. Uh, Oh, Cream's, Cream saw all the guys there. He knows that there's a lot of guys there. He's got to be careful. Oh, he's on the bird. Oh, but are they looking in the right places? He knows that one's in the hallway. Didn't see the other one. His uh, his buddy Organics does take it out. They do remain uh, on their two cap hold. 139 to 143. It's even tickets. Oh, but Cream girl, nice shot. Great job over here on to A. Cream goes down. Oh, this is not looking good. Uh-uh. Yes, Exertus uh, does go for the triple cap ever so briefly. Exertus uh, is up only by eight tickets. Going to LG, he is pushing. Oh, he's sort of holding his place on Alpha, waiting for people to push on up. Oh, and he's low on health. Oh my God, Mad Dog, with a nice hold right there, able to pick up one and then a second one. Uh, he's going to be left up alive over there next to B. That's going to be a threat that uh, Warchild needs to take care of. Now he's going to be back up. Unfortunately, he falls. Trying to fall over those stairs. Is that three man or a four man push almost? No, it's Oh, bad nade. I like I like K Ray's flink though. He is flinking around to Charlie. Back from where Exertus came from. Does he see the last guy? He does. Takes him out. Takes out Reptile. Are there any more left? Maybe. He's now going to be a little more aggressive, pushing it on up. Or is he? What? Oh. Is that nobody is back on B. It's completely open. We're finally going to be seeing Cream coming back in Organics, as well as Razor going to be spawning in. But they're all in mid. Nobody's in the backfield of B to try and do anything about that. Mad Dog doesn't even go down. Reptile might go down. No. It's up taking out Razor, so good job there. But the problem was that they didn't get anybody back. No, they did not. Nothing. They don't really have to hold it, or that guy has to stay alive. Oh, Organics may get popped any second now. He does take out Elegy, but he himself gets popped. He gets back rage. Cream Girl's the last one up. He knows his buddy got back raged. But where is he? Where's the guy? Is he going for a revive? Be careful, dude. If you go for a revive. You may be putting yourself into a bad situation. Cream Girl miraculously gets a kill against Reptile. I wouldn't have thought he would have been able to take that out. Uh, but they are holding uh, on Alpha Charlie. It's 87 to 123 in favor of Exertus. A 30 ticket lead for Exertus right now. But Bleed is not in their favor. Going to Elegy again. He is pushing up on Bravo? No? No, on Alpha. While the lead is not in their favor, they do have a little bit of momentum uh, going into there. They made their whole lot of change. They're holding on to the metal detectors very nicely. That was a bad push by Razor. Uh, it, that was hard. He 
game cuts away. Garrett's going to have you. Garrett, you need to turn now. And he does at the last second, able to take him down. So nice job there. Uh, and they were able to do a clean up play machine to push up through Jay. So that was a very good play there by Warchild. Now they don't need to get aggressive here. We're seeing one pushing up into two. Uh, that is not too bad. You can't play that there. But they need to stay back. They need to hold this two cap. It is now 84 to 100 tickets. They have to win by 60. Yeah, they don't. They don't have a lot of tickets to work with right now. No, they don't. And, and they can win this. They can win this. Uh, they just have to be able to uh, uh, to hold the two cap uh, for now. And but they're not going to be able to see like uh, with reptile and uh, lead machine here with nobody. Uh, well, okay, K Rick's there. He's they're positioning themselves, but they got to get some picks and got to get it soon. They do not have a lot of tickets to deal with. Although K Rick already taking shots. He knows he's been exposed. Yeah, they do end up losing C right now. Exertus is going to be uh, pushing up, capitalize on this. J Rod playing very, very nice. He's sitting way back onto B flag, just waiting for any kind of response to come back. I do think he's positioning there. All they have to do, all they know that they have to do is just lead him down. It is now 70 to 92 uh, in favor of Exertus. They don't have to get into a hurry, they don't have to be uh, trying to force something. Uh oh. But well, get, get, get Charlie. Wow, Organics with a nice three piece there over into metal detectors. Able to take all of them out. And now he's going to be pushing up onto B. Yes. Try and get the cap. Will this be a triple cap in favor of them? But they only got 63 tickets. I don't know. Oh, no. I don't think they're going to be able to win it, but they're definitely going to make a statement with this one. Yes. Uh, we will be seeing Cream uh, as well as Organics spawning over here onto B. 63 tickets to game two. Or in favor of Exertus now. Warchild is going to try to spread out as much as they possibly can to hold on to this. Uh, LG ends up getting taken down. Lead Machine is trying to make something happen. He goes up over his fence. He does get taken out. Captain Garrett C is now going to be burning down with Mac. And uh, K Rake dropped the random guy. J Rod's going to be able to come into Snake and get a free uh, burn onto his one. It is now 62 to 64. Alpha is being contested. Uh, by Razor. Does take out J Rod. He is taking it back. What about Charlie? Charlie is being taken by Exorcist Mad Dog, although Cream Girl is pushing it up on it, but be a little bit too aggressive right now. It's 60 to 60. 59 59. Now, I don't think he can win this. I don't think they can. I, mean, I don't think that they're no. going to be able to. I mean, it is, it is very close. Remember, if they're within the 10 tickets, then they can still take it to the third round. Yes, that's so, right. You know, Okay, at least we can replay this map, basically. But uh, as of right now, I don't see that happening. Uh, we're seeing just a battle of attrition. One and three tickets over here. Two and three tickets going there. Uh, we will be seeing Cream uh, taking a two out. Two oh, two Razor, does it Razor showed his back. And gets taken out. And now, uh, Exertus is going to push up really hard into A. We got LG into cuts. And Led Machine over they got a revive off, off that. 57 to 40. In favor of, uh, for the first time in this match, in favor of Warchild. Yes. Captain Garrett is pushing up onto Alpha, but there's a lot of guys there. A lot of, of Exertus guys there. Captain Garrett goes down. A three man push. Actually, a almost a triple cap. We do see Exertus, Mad Dog, and J Rod on Bravo. And that's it. That's right. There's a triple cap. Yeah, there's a triple cap. Yes, it is it's most certain. Yes. Which is going to be Paracel Storm, and we'll talk about that here in a few moments. But uh, Exertus, you know, they, they, they got to be happy that they got that win. But Warchild definitely didn't give up. So right now, we are just going to be waiting for these tickets to just roll on down. Uh, B flag is going to be capped by Exertus here in just a few moments. So we're to 35. Uh, XTS should be able to take this round. I felt like Warchild was getting uh, doing a whole lot better in 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 winning the battles, but it it just felt like that at the very beginning, their their initial execution cost them quite a few tickets, and they had to they had to claw back just to get parity before anything else and. And they, 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 the attrition just got to them. They eventually just, yeah. there was a trade that was constant. Yeah, I agree. They have to come back 
from such a deficit. Because um, they really did show some strong skills there towards the end. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> they started getting stuck over there in a doorway. Oh, man. Some fatties. Some fat, fat fatties. Yes. Uh, but now they are going to be winning by 34 tickets. I, I agree with you. I think that that initial breakout where they got triple cap themselves, where they, they weren't able to really do anything, um, it, it's hard to come back from that. Not only is it hard to come back in, front, in the game, it's hard to come back from that psychologically. I mean, you in your mind, you're like, holy crap, we just got triple cap for a while. I mean, this is not good. We're in the finals. There's some pressure on it right there. And you don't want to be dropping games like that. Yes. Now, guys, we are going immediately into uh, uh, map number two. Map number two is Paracel Storm. It is uh, – It uh, it's going to be uh, – we're going right into it. We'll do a few restarts, so we'll get going. And so uh, stay tuned, guys. We will be uh, going live real soon. Yeah, so um, right now we are going to be on Paracel Storm, uh, as you guys can see. There is the map right there. Going to be zooming on on it. Okay, right there it is. All right, so on Paracel Storm, it's a little bit uh, of a free-floating map. This was the map that we played in round number one, uh, but we didn't see either of these two teams playing it. So it's going to be interesting to see what we're going to be seeing out of both of them. War Child actually picked this one for their finals matchup, uh, which means that they, they got to know something. They, they got to feel comfortable on this particular matchup. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what we see out of, out of that particular team. Exertus, uh, they, they've also said that they feel comfortable on Parasol Storm. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see how both of these teams react to each other. Uh, a and B flag are going to be the dominant holds, uh, I'm going to say. Not to say that you can't do it with, with C and B. Obviously, you don't want to do it with C and A. Very hard holders and a lot of uh, ground they got to make up in between. But um, it's definitely possible uh, for us to be seeing, you know, an AC hold and a B hold. Now, uh, if you look at the map right now, we're going to be having uh, we're going to be having a B house, which is right here. We're going to have a B flag building, uh, which is there. Uh, we're going to be having a A trenches, which is back behind A. Obviously, A crates is going to be on it. Um, we're going to have station, which is down uh, towards the, the south end of the map. Uh, then we'll have force, which is this group right over here onto C. Obviously, have C flag and everything going to be on it. And uh, we're switching. So we are going to be switching servers right now, guys. Um, should we get going here in just a few moments? But, uh, but anyways, on this particular matchup, uh, so we're probably going to be seeing, um, like we said in the first round, is that uh, you're going to be seeing probably a two-man push out to A, uh, three over onto B at, when you're starting on the Chinese side, when you're trying to go to the US side, um, what we've been seeing here recently was a one man push, a two man push to A, and then a three man push straight down into B, or a one man to C, one to A, and then three into B. We've seen both of those pushes uh, continuously now, and uh, it's been working here pretty soon, fairly well for a lot of these teams. They've been able to cap B uh, fairly strong, and uh, we're going to server one. And uh, so, so they've been able to do a lot of work there. Now, uh, it'll be interesting to see which one of these teams, uh, which one of these strats these teams do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be saying that uh, we're going to be seeing probably uh, on the Chinese side, or I'm, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Russian side, we're probably going to be seeing a, a three-man push to B with one to C and one to A. It's going to be my hypothesis for that first round. Um, so it'll be interesting uh, what comes out of it. Now we are trying to get back in the server. Okay, now we are in the server. And Dastro is finally going to be back here in just uh, right Yeah. Now. We are starting soon. Soon-ish. Something. Is this live? I don't think so. No, there's not even there are ten people in here. He ain't live, guys. It's not live. Guys, we are getting real close here 
to the finals. This is the second round. This is map number two of the best of three finals. Exertus versus Warchild. Live at Land Land Fest. Guys, do you know it's live? Did you know it's live? And let's just, I mean, is it really live? How can you tell? Because we're here, guys, in the camera. We're live in Atlanta for the Atlanta Land Fest Battlefield 4 5e5 Domination Tournament. We have been doing this for eight hours now, about something like that. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. But, uh, I think it's been worth it. It's been a lot of it's fun. It's been a lot of fun. Right um, I've had a blast at it. The only thing that's kind of frustrated me was the fact that. Uh, yeah, your phone got your phone broke. You want to show them the phone? You want to show? Oh my God! Yeah, we'll show you the phone later. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's pretty bad, guys. I ended up just bashing it. It looks pretty bad. I don't even know how you do that. I mean, it almost, it's almost like it's intentional. It, it, it almost does, but uh, I assure you that it wasn't because I got to pay eighty dollars to replace that. Oh. I'm not looking to that. Not too good. Yeah, so not only was, was yesterday a, 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 a frustrating flying day, but uh, I broke my phone. So. Oh, no. All right, guys. We are getting close to... We're getting close to the, to the end here. Uh, I think so. Yeah, we're getting close. Do we have everyone on? No, we're still missing one guy. That's all right. We're still missing one, but uh, let's check the chat out. Let's check chat out. Let's go back in game and check the chat out. Yeah. I know I'm moving around back and forth. Here we go. Let's see what chat is up to. What is the chat saying? You got the chat up, right? There you go. Yeah, there's a lot of meanness in the chat. That's actually not surprising at all. <laughs> uh, we got to talk there about Jordy, uh, on the infamous. Service, no. Longer there anymore. no. Well, here's the thing, though. Let's talk about Jordy for a second. The thing about Jordy is, is that despite all the controversy behind Jordy, Exertus is still won several events. Is that a fair statement? In about, as in, they, they, they've won all, almost all the level BF events that have taken place. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. So, so you can talk about Jordy Slot all you like, guys, but Exertus is still a super strong team. Yeah, they are. They're, they're yes. a very strong team. And they've actually been through a couple of iterations of themselves. They've lost, uh, they've lost players, uh, they, they gained a lot of players from Rifle, and they, they basically lost a lot of them. Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, a lot of their, their regulars are dead. 99 does not play for them anymore. No. Um, but uh, Clicks. Clicks does play for them still. Uh, he's, he is the captain of the team, so I don't think he's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. Um, and then uh, they've lost uh, Nimic, and Troy hasn't shown up for quite some time. Uh, those two guys were a very, very big part of that team. Uh, some of their top fraggers, I would say, uh, within the, the matchup. So. Indeed. We're just waiting for everyone to get in. We have everyone in the server. That things look good. I think we're ready to go. We're going for a restart. I think I had this set up right. Yeah, here it so, goes. We are going to be going live. Okay, so this is going to be live, guys. Let's see what these teams are going to be doing. I'm going to say that we're going to be seeing one uh, over here for the Chinese team. We're going to be seeing, what, uh, one, two, two probably out to A, three to B. For the U.S. team, we're going to be seeing three to B, one to A, and one to C. Let's see if they're going to make a liar out of me. XCS is going to be starting on the U.S. side. That's right. Warchild on Chinese side. 200 tickets, approximately 197. It's approximate. Not exact. It's close enough. Yeah, and uh, who are you rooting for? Who am I rooting for? Now, now, who do you think is going to win? Who are you I'm rooting for? I'm, I, 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 I'm rooting for Warchild. I want them. <laughs> the, I, I, like the, I, I like the story of the underdog clawing their way back. We I have a two-man two Warchild push on Alpha. We are going to be seeing a two Child gonna be pushing back out there, uh, and actually, Exertus is gonna be with A2, uh, 2 2 2 1 basically on A1 over there onto uh, C and then 2 onto the B flag now. Uh, Exertus did stay alive over here on 
to Hank, uh, as well as one there from uh, Warshaw's video. Ooh, nice nades. Looks like they came out on top. They will be able to get the A burn as well as the B burn. So that's a win for them. Also, Creamy was able yes. to pick up one over there onto the stairs at uh, B flag. So that was a nice job uh, on that one. Bad dog goes straight up onto B flag. And look at that. Exertus has four players over there onto B house and back behind B. Uh, Mad Dog, I think, does take out Organics, but Razor does take him out, I think. Go into the lead machine. He is uh, watching that position on Bravo nearby, but sees others using that pillar to their advantage. Bravo, still not taken yet. Still not taken by uh, by anyone. But lead machine does take out K-Rake. Yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting push there. Uh, Ray, had a really oh, no. On LG and uh, Mad Dog. Uh, swinging back around, they were able to take C, but they left nobody onto A flag. Uh, and A is completely open. Oh, and, 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 and he's taking it. Uh, and Mad Dog getting right onto it with no problem. Not a problem. Uh, I, I don't know what that which I was thinking. They didn't have a single guy on it. K Ray goes down. Warchild says, no, we'll give you Alpha. We really want Bravo. We're pushing it back. It's 174 to 185 in favor of Warchild. 10 ticket lead. Bleats in their favor. But, Exertus, they are so aggressive. They've been pushing up on all the various flanks the entire game. Pushing up on Charlie now. They're okay with it. They're okay with, with, with losing a few. Yes, Warchild pushing on a Bravo a little bit, but Charlie is, uh, a, as you can see, not much uh, a Warchild presence there, although Garrett running on his way back, suspecting there will, may be someone pushing up. He does uh, prone his way, army crawl through the little hole, only to get shot in the face by Lead Machine. Yeah, good backup. Oh, Yes. Oh, where would he go? Oh. Is that Razor going to do? No, Elegy does end up making it. He is still on it. Captain Garrett knows he's there. Uh-oh, did he see the guy drop down? He did, but ends up, whoa, there's no one spawned in on him. Garrett right away, super fast, 20% health. And save Charlie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a play. The, yeah, Warchild guys are keeping uh, uh, Exertus in, on Bravo. They're holding these side buildings as we. But at the same time, while I speak, uh, they're not doing a great job. Lead Machine does end up getting around Charlie, taking Charlie uh, handily. No one's there. He can take it. At the same time, hey, look, Mad Dog's on, uh, on on Alpha, so he can do that too. This is actually not good at all for Warchild. It seems they may have overextended themselves. Oh, 
but boy, they, they, Warchild is just pinched right now. They are pinched. That's a really long play. Ooh. It, it did pay off. He does take out Reptile long distance with Scar H. Does take on Alpha because Reptile was the only one defending on Alpha. But here comes a big play on Bravo going to the free cam. Yeah, it looks like B is going to be contested. And that was going to be uh, LG right there with a nice pickup and the capture for his team. Uh, we should be seeing a push over onto C flag. Ooh, two people going down for four shots. Whoa! That is, that is that's huge. 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 That's Oh, oh, oh. He they should be able to get extraction on Garrett. What? Uh, as that's going to be happening, he's going to be jumping up from behind and should be able to take out Mad Dog, no problem. If he's paying attention, and he's not. Oh, he does miss it. But somehow, somehow, Cream does a, a great 180 prone, ends up taking him out, but goes down, holding. Not able to take out Lead Machine there. Oh, man. Yes. Yes, Warchild is winning this, uh, being very aggressive. They got some great random spawns, although Organics is going to be going 2v1 on Alpha. He's not on Burns, so the Burns already taking place. He needs help. He needs help right now. No. Oh. Two on two. K rate, last one up. Am I going to get there in time? Let's check him out. I think he does. Does get a revive? No. But does get taken out instead. A little hop, skip, and a jump to your doom. Cream Girl, though, pushing up on Bravo. Takes out Manda. Good. Whoa! Oh! What? What? What was that? That, oh! <laughs> no, he's down. He's down? Let's go to Reptile. It was bad. I wonder, uh, something happened. Wow, every time we go into each one, they all die. Uh, three Warshot guys died. Go to Elegy, he's 18 and 8. What, what's that? Caster's Curse. Oh, yeah, Caster's Curse. I'm cursing all... Oh, and look at this. Four of the five Warchild guys are down. The bleed is in the favor of Exertus. Yeah, so Exertus, uh, they're, they're trying to make a comeback. They've now taken that 40 ticket lead to only 20. Oh, yeah. yeah they've been able to do a lot of work here. And, I mean, honestly, Warchild, what, what happened? What they, did happen? They're just not getting their picks right now. They're losing their team fights. Um, you know, they're, they're not able to get up in there, basically, like they were before. Uh, at the moment, but uh, you know what, Mad Dog uh, able to take out K-Rake himself, stop that deep burn. That's a really good job there, or a good stop from Mad Dog. And, uh, Ooh, Razor's last one up. <laughs> yeah, it's just not looking good for Warchild. They're starting to lose it. They are. And for the first time in this matchup, for a while, Service is now in the 51-47. 
I feel like that 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 Warchild is just being caught at bad angles for the last two or three minutes because they're not winning the fights. Reptile's having problems jumping over the fence, but he made it. Yeah, so they're, they're looking to get a triple yeah, they are. But it looks like he's just going to be trading B for C. Craven's going to be the only one over here onto that A flag. He ends up getting taken down. Now C flag getting contested. And the first one for A Rainbow on that. So now, finally, uh, they are going to be getting back on it. But, I mean... The damage has been done. It's it's been wiped. It's 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 now a twenty ticket deficit. They have to be able to to really lock this down. They may be able to win this with fifteen tickets, maybe, maybe, if they can hold this from here on out. And his buddies are spawning on him. Oh yeah. Yes. Going to uh, look at around a four man Exertus uh, swarm between Charlie and Alpha going to Razor. He's trying to get in between them, but will he be able to get any of them? Maybe he's just providing some intel to his teammates. Going to Cream Girl on Alpha. Does get taken out. Alpha will be taken by Exertus, as will Charlie. It's 11 to 13, guys. 10 to 13 in favor of Warchild. Now 9 uh, for Exertus. There's still one more. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Razor. Razor. Wow. I think that's game, guys. Eight to zero. Round one, Parasail Storm, Warchild over Exertus. We're going to round two in just a bit. But wow, what a match. Eight to zero. That was a good match right there. Eight to zip. Warchild wins it, but just by the skin of their teeth, uh, I, th I think they just got into a bit of a funk right there. And uh, that, that was intense. That was awesome. It was intense. And we'll be going to round two in a minute or so. But boy, guys, that was awesome. So what an awesome... Awesome round. Flipping sides and going at it again. Remember, um, we are going to be having. I believe Warchild had uh, the U.S. bonds. No, it was going to be Xerus had the U.S. bonds. Yes. Uh, Warchild will be playing on the uh, on the was it the Russian team? I believe no, the U.S. team. I can't think of you guys. But they will have the option to hit B with that three-player. Wow. Uh, push like that we've seen so far. So I'm going to say on this next round, we're going to be seeing one set to A. One set to C, and then three set to B off the break for Warchild. On Exertus, we're going to be seeing two pushing out to A, uh, possibly a third, but I'm going to say two push to A, three push to B, with one of them being very, very aggressive up into B house. Uh, that makes sense. And we are we are now back in the server. We have 40 seconds remaining on the countdown. We have Warchild on U.S., Exertus on China. And this will probably be live, guys. Zoom on in. Yeah, this will be live right now. And, wow, after that last match right there, Dash Girl, oh. you're, still, you're still rooting for Warchild, right? Oh, I, I, oh it's going to be close. If, it, if next round, that was a nail-biter. 
That was a nail biter. I'm gonna be honest. I'm rooting for Warchild. You're rooting for Warchild now. Let's go. Let's, let's I was. I was. Well, I was. Ho I, I. I'm hoping for. It. I was hoping though that Warchild would win by a slightly larger margin than eight tickets. But we will see. It's live, guys. Here we go. And absolutely, and we are going to be seeing a uh, what's that? A three-man? Yeah, three-one. Uh, one push over there for Warchild. No, they switched it up on me. Yes. I'm only going to be pushing two guys to B uh, with uh, two of them going into B house. So nobody going to A uh, for Warchild. They're going straight for that CB push uh, while Exertus was able to do a 3 2 push. They did get the cap on B flag. They did. But everybody went down, so that's going to leave it open for Warchild to get back onto that flag and get an early cap uh, so they can't complete the CB push or CB hold. Uh, the thing that they have to watch out for is uh, Exertus is already going to be from the side on the fourth side, and that is uh, that's going to be a little bit of a fourth there in, in uh, well, their side. Yes. <laughs> now that was a close round last round, but uh, it's a round anew. Anything can uh, can take place. Reptile again. Exertus on red. China. 196 to 192. It's anyone's game. They are taking back Bravo, which means that it will give them the double. Give them the bleed. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, we'll be seeing Creamy trying to push back up. Wow. Uh, two, that's good. K-Rate gets taken down. Uh, J-Rod and Cre or uh, J-Rod is going to be in there. L-G ends up getting taken down onto B. Rep Reptile will actually be on the B flag. Ha-ha! Uh, so push onto C flag. Uh, <laughs> Warshot Razor is actually going to be on it. Let me shoot, though. Trying to stop it. Not going to be able to. Uh, and Too many. They are going to be able to hold the C. Takes one, but there's more. Oh, no, 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 no. K. Rake uh, uh, took the opportunity of the guy pushing up, but didn't realize there could be a backup, and he totally let his position get exposed the moment he began firing at the first belligerent. Yes, we see this. Uh, uh, three Warchild guys versus one remaining. Lead Machine was the last Exertus guy. He does get taken out. But there, look, there's still more Exertus guys on the periphery. Yeah, it's going back and forth, uh, with the now a three-man. Exertus players that are going to be back up. Now three. Going to be pushing it back onto B flag. It's going to be a three on three once again. Where Exertus is finally going to be pushing it onto this B cap. Uh, they do need to be taken down. That was going to be Reptile. We traded out with the K ring. Uh, now we're going to be seeing the rest of Warchild trying to push it and make something happen. Uh, they are going to be able to hold it, but just they are. narrowly, LG ends up getting taken down, trying to make something uh, to work for his teammates. They're going to be one spotted back here, and that's going to be J-Rod, the ringer, the one they picked up. Uh, they trying to hold it down for his teammates. While that's happening, see a three man A three-man push uh, on Exertus on Bravo to spawn in. I think they're getting close to clearing it out. They are taking Bravo. Oh, my God, and they're taking C. They're going to get a triple cap here. Oh, wow. Let's see if they can hold on to that. What is Warchild doing? And they don't. Warchild will be able to go to C. And put that back for his, for their teams. But that does give Exertus a triple cap. Little, you know, yeah, a little, a little cap. A little triple cap can go a long ways. A hot oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, easy. Easy. Yes, a big push by Warchild. 
know that, no, I'm mistaken, only a, a two-man push under Bravo. Oh, we see an engineer with Captain Garrett. Let's go to Captain Garrett with an engineering class. Yeah, yeah, that's something that we hadn't seen a whole lot of yet. You guys may be wondering, why, why is he using the engineering? The rockets are a big deal. Yeah, it changes the tactics uh, for uh, this map. Organics taken on, on Charlie. Bravo will be taken by Exertus. 135 to 141. Warchild is winning here by eight tickets. Nine tickets. Yeah, and right now, you know, it, it, it is anybody's game. Uh, Warchild showing a little bit of dominance here and there, but Exertus able to claw their way back. Might claw their way back. And, uh, you know, they just... Every single time, Warchild seems to have a, a huge advantage. Uh, Exertus seems to pull themselves back out of it. Uh, we are even seeing a fight over here onto A flag where it looks like Lead Machine uh, was able to take him down and get the gray out. Uh, Warchild is spaced out here pretty nicely. They're over here in the A trenches. This is going to be, uh, who is this? This is Garrett. He's going to be over here. He's going to catch a Lead Machine right out to the open. Finally going to be getting the kill. Should be getting on that burn here in just a few seconds. On. Uh, but his buddy did end up going down. Razor is going to be get back up, though, to try and get that cap for his teammates. And uh, I would like to see right now a push down to the TV flag. Uh, it is completely wide open. We'll see four players from Exertus all looking towards A. I think they have a good chance of uh, getting a triple cap uh, for, for just a few seconds. I do like the fact that Warshot is uh, doing a three man hold on Alpha. Uh, you are right. There is a, a point of vulnerability with Exertus. They're putting a lot of effort on Alpha, but going up to the going back to the map, we don't we don't see much in terms of them. They're holding through the buildings with J Rod, but will he? Oh, 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 nice job there. Poor Creamy able to pick up a nice two piece uh, using the wreck that you don't really see at all for competitive gaming. Just missing that slightly delay when you shoot it, and uh, so we are going to see it. Uh, Creamy doing some work trying to bring his way back onto A flag. Yes, Mad Dog is uh, trying to get Alpha back slowly. The B, but look, but as you're right, yeah, Exertus pushing a lot on Bravo. Elegy gets the uh, a one kill with the Scar H, long distance shots. They really do need this to get Bravo back to clear out some of these uh, these positions. I do like Lee Machine's push on, on Alpha. I think that could be good. Maybe. Nope, he's having second thoughts. You know, honestly, at, at this moment right now, uh, Exertus, it, it feels like Exertus is falling into what Warchild did in, uh, in the previous round. They don't, know, they don't really know what to do. Yes. Like, okay, we got picks. What do we do now? now well, how, do we, how do we use these picks? Yeah, yeah. How do we know where the vulnerabilities are, where the, the points of opportunity may be? Cream Girl does go f a double on Bravo. He he is getting it back. All the while, J Rod pushing up on 
Nice pushing back on Bravo. I, I was curious what Exertus is doing here because they're they're still down by 40. They're getting some good picks, as you mentioned, but they gotta hold some flags. They gotta get some flags. They gotta get bodies on these points. No. Yeah. They have a little bit of leeway. Yes. Um, so that's all they have to do. Uh, and, and I think they will be able to hold this team cap. I mean, they're doing a really good job of uh, keeping Warchild busy here. Uh, Warchild not able to, I mean, they've had a presence over here next to B for so long. And they're just now getting onto the B cap. Uh, Lead Machine getting taken down. Uh, Mad Dog is up. He could do something about that, but I don't know where he was thinking there. Not looking for the cap, that was for sure. J Rod will be getting back on that. As that was Re flag, take yes, and Reptile did get Charlie, uh, ends up taking out k Rake. Uh, it's still a three-ticket lead for Warchild, but still anyone's game. Look. Mad Dog goes down, let's keep on going to the Cream Girl. Cream Girl pushing back on Charlie. Yeah, and this is what, this is what I was saying before, Dasho. Uh, we're seeing Warchild getting that massive lead, and then Exertus slowly but surely chipping at it. Oh, yes. And that's exactly what they're doing. Seems like Yes, and Cream Girl with a, a nice double uh, on Bravo. He is taking it back. 74 to 48. It's now in their favor. If he stays alive, he does end up getting it. But he he's been spotted. He knows that he is in a, he's vulnerable. But does take out Mad Dog. Wow. And Captain Garrett's there. Yeah, that they are, but they're not taking advantage of it just yet. They're they're now shifting from Charlie, perhaps to Bravo. They've clearly lost Alpha. They're up by 37 tickets, but a four-man push onto on a Bravo. A five-man push now. We got a camera on this one. Yeah, it is going to be a lot of dead bodies here if they're not careful. Uh, we will be seeing a slight backer here for Warchild. That's going to be Razor, uh, who's going to try and finish that up. He did end up taking out one. Yes, Exertus is uh, holding Bravo. Boy, four of the five Exertus players are dead. Lead Machine is only one up. Let's check him out. He's last man in the squad. It's been indicated. Yeah, right now, Lead Machine pushing up over towards B. I, I believe that was a bad move. He needs to kind of back up once again over to A. He has four guys to take care of C. That should be plenty. A Rake is going to be the only one left up over here. Maybe they can. 39 to 17, as you mentioned, but the bleed is in favor. Albeit, oh, actually, it's being changed right now. What, is this a triple? Could this be a triple for Warchild? Wow. Yes. Exertus has to hold this. They have to hold this. 
not only do they have to hold this, but they have to be almost perfect with their reses. Oh, yeah. And they got to stick together. They can't be going out ones and twos at a time. They got to stick together. They, they have to play basically the button system. They do. Let's go to Reptile and see what he's doing. Uh, t trying to get a few picks on Bravo, 28 to 9. Are they going to get triple cap on this? They are getting out. They are getting alpha. Guys, they have a triple cap. Exerta still has a chance here. Oh, that they no, they're responding now. I don't know why they're not responding. What's the deal? Triple cap in favor of Warchild, though. Technically, it's already over because he is below eight tickets. But that was an amazing match right there. Three, three flags at the very end for Warchild. Fourteen tickets. Fourteen. What they ended up winning it by. So we have an eight-ticket round. A Fourteen-ticket ticket round. For map number two, this is crazy. And now we're going to go into a map number three. Which is Dawnbreaker. Which is going to be Dawnbreaker. And that's the map that we saw both of these teams trading around on. Um, in fact... I think they're the only team to trade rounds. Am I, am I right? They were. They were the only teams uh, amongst each other to trade rounds. Yeah, they were the only teams to trade rounds uh, on this particular uh, in this particular tournament. So it's going to be interesting to see what they come out come up from with Dawnbreaker. It's going to be a very exciting matchup here, a rematch where Warchild actually lost that last one. So guys, we are going to the third map, uh, Dawnbreaker. It's a tiebreaker map. Warchild versus Exertus. We did see Warchild and Exertus play on this same map just a few hours ago. And boy, a lot of trades. A lot of trades. Yeah. This could be anyone's game. Yeah, this is going to be this is going to be intense. This is going to be uh, interesting. Uh, both of these teams have actually said that they don't really like this map too much. They don't like it. But uh, it'll be interesting nonetheless to see what comes out of it. Yes, we will see what comes about. I, I think back of that last match on Dawnbreaker where, where J-Rod got that amazing and lucky random spawn that ended up breaking that, that like Warchild like hole. I think the momentum wouldn't have, wouldn't have been broken. Yeah, they would have been able to win that matchup. Yes. And, uh, we would have been seeing that Zerd is going to the Witch's bracket as opposed to Warchild. Very, very intense setup right now. We are taking a bit of a break, uh, as I can see from a few of the players are uh, uh, stretching their legs. So it it will be a five-minute yeah, so break. We are going to be taking a five-minute break right now. Uh, as we're taking this the five-minute break, I do want to grab somebody real quick. Who do you want to grab? Uh, to, to talk to. Let me, let me yeah, let's talk, talk to somebody. somebody. Actually, actually, here, just a second. Brett's going to go find uh, someone to talk to for five minutes while we wait. But guys, Don Breaker, 5v5, Domination, Exertus versus Warchild. This is the this is the last map. The winner of this map will be crowned the champions of Atlanta Land Fest live. Did you guys know that we're live? Did you guys know that we're here in person? You guys know this guy? Hey, I'm not in my little uh, man cave thing. I'm actually here at the Land Fest, Atlanta Land Fest. With Brett, who's who left. It's just me right now. But boy, I'm excited. This is going to be a, a intense match. Uh, I it, it, it could be anyone's game. It really could. And Chad, how are you guys doing? How are our viewer account doing? We're doing good in a viewer account. It's a Widgey raid. Widgey Bear is indeed another level of BF guy. This is a little BF stream uh, as it is. Oh, I think we're going to have... Uh, some interviews. Let's uh, plug this stuff in. Sorry, they have water here. And uh, give this a try. Are we going to get four in? Or three? Oh, right. Hey, we're going to do an interview. So uh, I, want, I want you guys uh, to both. Uh, we, have, like, we have a short five minute break. So, could, so can you guys quickly introduce yourselves and, and talk? But into the mic real close and so they can pick it up and and just introduce yourselves and what team you're on 
Uh, I'm LG and uh, I play for Lights Out Gaming. Um, I'm here with some friends from Exertus. Uh, just here to win it all. That's, Very cool. That's the plan. And hello. hello, I am Lead Machine. He is Lead Machine. Part of Exertus. Is that loud? That's it good. Is, that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, we're here in Atlanta. It's gonna be good times. We're gonna try to win a Dawn Breaker. We. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think of Dawn Breaker? It's a bit, we're not we're not super strong on it, but we're getting better at it. So, but you, think, th you think you, you think got a real weird? We have a little issues with um, some of the sides, some of the pushes, like far sides, a little iffy. Yes, and I think we need to do some more flanking. Oh, a lot more, more long range shots. Uh, I like to the way I play. I like to move in and yes. then get the close range kills. It's a little easier. I don't like to waste bullets. If you're farther away, it kind of gives them a little little positioning of where you are where you're at and stuff that makes sense move now, closer make it swift now 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 paracel storm the last map it, it, it felt close but is this your strongest map not so much um well we're playing with uh three other people that we're not usually play with so we got me and reptile so we didn't really we only played maybe once scrim or one match on paracel so uh in terms of being our best, no, but I think we just had a little sloppy of the pushes and stuff and holding the flags and uh, positioning. Now, now, uh, now Elgie, you are, you're on Lights Out, and, and, and I'm guessing you don't usually scrim with these guys. Were there any big differences in terms of call-outs or things around those lines that made it difficult at times to... Uh, actually, all the call-outs are different. I learned them all today pretty much as we went along, and uh, it's... Definitely caused some communication errors uh, on my part because um, I'm not sure sometimes what to call things. Uh, you know, sometimes we miss call outs too when we're going over them. So you just kind of go with the flow, so to speak. Now, do you guys feel like you've warmed up, you know, sufficiently for the last last few hours? I know Exertus, you guys were in the winners bracket, went all the way to the top. You guys had quite a, a few a long break, you know, three or four hours yeah. almost. Yeah. I think we're we're all pretty tired. Um, you know, we came in. Uh, actually, me and Dan both uh, flew in, okay. and uh, you know we came in pretty late last night, set up, and then you know just started going over stuff. But uh, you know we were all really tired, you know. So I don't know if that that makes yeah. sense. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> but I, now, not to not to uh, to divulge any of your secrets, are you going to be? Are you going to try anything different this time around on Dawnbreaker? You want it the first time? Well, I don't know about you. Uh, I lost all our spots. You can yeah. flip spawns, and sometimes that happens. And then once the, clock, the spawns, once the, we're trying to hold our spots. Sometimes we get out of position, then the spawns flip, and we need to learn how to reposition on that. So there's like, if you've got the A, B hold, there's a lot of good spots in there, but we're a little iffy on the B, C side. So I think we need to flank a little more on that, try to get around to A, and then flip, back, flip it back into our favor. How do you guys like up. the spawn system? Is it is it A, that's great? That, that it's a part of it and it's sometimes it's random or is it something that you wish could be changed a bit? Um, it's it's somewhat predictable. So, I mean, it, it plays into our strategy. I guess, you know, we're used to it now, whether it's ideal. I think uh, it was changed. It's not what we're used to from Battlefield 3 days. And, uh, you know, it's just something you adapt to. And um, I don't really have a problem with it now. I think it was harder during that transitioning period but you know we're all kind of used to it and sometimes we're still like have those what the hell moments why are, why are they spawning there but uh for the most part we know where they're going to be and uh you know we try to control and capitalize on that makes sense yeah i feel like um as far as dawnbreaker goes uh towards the end of the last time we played it um you know in that last 60 tickets or so we uh we actually controlled the map really well and we kind of started to get finally got the flow down but i mean that's just from practicing together, you know, we don't we don't have that chemistry as a as a team because we're not used to all playing together. So, um, makes sense. Let me what, what what are your thoughts on the spawns? Is it uh, uh, spawns? The spawns? Uh, you can flip them and usually all spawn bomb, and then you gotta like hustle to the next leg. I mean, there's a lot of hustling. A lot of hustling in this game. It feels like it sometimes. Um, I don't know. I mean, any sort of shooter is gonna have spawns that are designated. So I mean, you can't really avoid it. So. Just gotta predict it and guess. And well, that uh, makes sense. Well, it up. seems like that that uh, that we will be starting the next go. round soon. Any shout outs? Play machine. Uh, Minnesota. I don't have anyone. How about Seven Teku? I know he likes to watch these these. All right. Matches, so we're Seven gonna give Teku. him a shout out. Sounds good.
Uh, I'll give a shout out to uh, my friends in Lights Out Gaming and uh, also to the, my previous uh, teammates on uh, Flatline. Um, you know, I'm kind of here representing you know that legacy. So very cool. Yeah, where's Clicks, guys? Where's Clicks? Clicks, where are you? Yeah, come, come to us. Where is Clicks? All right. Well, guys, thanks for uh, for for taking a little bit of your time. Best of luck to uh, you uh, on this last map, Dawnbreaker, on the finals. I'm looking forward to it. Should be interesting. So I think if we lose this, then we get to go another round. I actually don't know the answer to that. I thought it was just best of three, but no, you have to talk to the admins. No, they, we continue. We have the advantage because we were in the winner's bracket, apparently. Um, so it would be best. So it will go into fourth, the fourth round, overtime. It will go into a fourth round, yeah. Okay. I don't know the answer. I'm actually, I don't know the answer to that. The admins yeah. will. Yes. We're going we're gonna to play it to win it, though. And yes. Yeah, we're going to go out there. There's not going to be a fourth. Game and, All right. You know, we're going. We're the admins are saying we're going. So let's get going. Thanks again, guys. And uh, best of luck. All right, guys, they're getting out of here. Uh, we have Brett coming back in just a bit. But what do we got? I'm going to go chat real quick and see what the chat says. Chat's just talking silly stuff. Yellow swag in a box for 1200, 4200. Uh, slam your jam. Whatever that means. Anyway. Look at the chat. A lot of people just talking stuff. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, have at it. It is water. Don't want, he's going to get hydrated, guys. So, we will be starting soon. They're all jumping in. I got to jump in the server, too. And Brett will be here soon as well. He's just talking to a few dudes. Master Impress says, nice interview. Oh, yeah, it went okay. Oh, here's, here he is. Here's Brett FX. So a little bit of an update how the finals are going to work. It's a little bit wonky, yes, I know, but it's what we got. So right now, if your child wins this map, they will win the first best of three. Okay? That means that uh, we can go to a second best of three. Wow. Because there's double elimination. Yeah, that's right. All right? And then they have to win two more maps, not in consecutive order, but two more maps. They have to win that best of three that's win the tournament. Yeah, so, so, so after they win the next – if they – if – if Warchild wins the next round, they will essentially have to do a new best of three. Yes. And if they can win that one, then they win. Exactly. Yes. So now we are going to map number three and Dawnbreaker, and this is all or nothing. Exertus basically can shut this down right now. Yes, they can. They can, shut it they down. can